you back at the same. Ain't playing. I don't talk until the microphone muffle on there. No glove, no love, you all. You know how that is. <laughs> hey, welcome to the show. I mean, you know, the best part about today's show is that it's Friday and Jody Watley's coming in. What? I said the legendary Jody Watley is coming in. And plus, we'll talk about the stars. The usual, Nick and Jessica. Mm. Oprah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna find the rest. We'll talk about the master cleanse. I'm gonna give you the recipe today. There's so many of you all who are on it. One of my, oh, tons of my coworkers. I've, I've just um, converted a new one on my way, on my walk into the studio. Scott, Scott's going on the master cleanse. Awesome. So we'll talk. I mean, we've got hours together. It is what it is. Welcome to the Wendy Williams experience. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the Queen of All Media, hey. Wendy Williams. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never get tired of hearing that China. Hey. 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 <laughs> I, uh, I invited a China to the Barnes and Divas extravaganza. Well, it turns out she won't be, and you know, she's an L.A. girl. She's not uh, going to be here in New York, so she won't be able to attend. Oh, my gosh, everybody. Uh, what an exhausting week. I mean, what is it, three weeks until Christmas? Gift cards for everybody, or are you shopping online? I'll tell you, I was driving the boulevard today. The boulevard to me is Fifth Avenue. It's, it's just a beautiful sight, a, a sea of people. If you have time to drive it, and then you look over to the right and you see the right Christmas tree, and, and people are shopping, and the tourists are looking up and ooing and eyeing, and, and people are bumping each other and not saying, excuse me, oh, you gotta love it. We're going to, um, I, I guess I was going to put a Christmas tree, but we're going to put it up this weekend. Harrow's, they're having a big sign. A 70% off sale, but it doesn't start until Tuesday. So I'm going to purchase the tree for this weekend. You know, a sensible tree. We're not, you know, we have like an 18-foot Christmas tree, but we're not doing all that. A sensible, like, six-foot tree, just a little one to sit in a little cubby to remind us that it's Christmas. It, Pre-lit, and I'll hang a few, you know, you know, balls on it and whatnot, you know. But so I'm gonna go purchase it at full price this weekend, save the receipt, and go back in there and back from the you know because the seventy percent. Listen, they have six, seven Christmas trees at Harrow starting at twenty five. Exactly what? You know exactly. And I'm not putting up any wreaths, nothing like that. It used to be the first Christmas in a few years. I'm not doing that full thing. And, and the electricity meter. Do you ever go after you plug everything in? Like Chevy Chase Christmas Vacation. If you plug everything in, you go downstairs and you look at your meter. And then it's whipping around. Like, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> so how are you guys doing? Everybody Okay. I know it's the beginning of the show. Are you ready? Anybody on the phone? I would, I would love to speak with you. Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, good afternoon. Is this the Wendy speaking experience? Yes, and Wendy speaking. Hey, Wendy. How are you? I'm fine. I'm just calling to tell you I have a celebrity spot in. Okay. Um, last night, you know, Oprah had a big um, gala in um, the opening of her show. Yeah, and she was on David Letterman. And yeah, I saw the her. She was with Tina Turner. Wow. Gail. Yeah. And you know who Gail was with? Who? Um, Tyler Perry. Wow. Yeah, right they there. came together yeah, wow. and they left together with Oprah and Stedman was in the back. Yeah, there yeah, there's nothing jumping off. Though. Come on, how you doing? I know, because yeah. you could have saw you, you you can see it on him. But you know what? I like the three of them being the coffee clutch. Oprah, Gail, and Tyler Perry. And guess who was there too? Jamie Foxx when he was there with Bruce Willis. They came out of the um forty second street library. Nice. Yes, and Naomi Campbell, she looks Oh my God, Wendy! Who 
Logan Paul. He was not in drag, and I did not know it was him. Well, he, you know, he's a cute man, but I like my Rue in full I, drag. I know, because when everybody was like, that's Rue Paul, that's Rue Paul, yeah. I said, no way, because I'm looking for the blonde hair, yeah, the no. big boom. No, it's not Rue, it's Charles. It was crazy. It was Sydney Poitier. I, and Sydney who? who Sydney who? Him. <laughs> who was I talking about? Sorry. Isaac Hayes, the master cleanser. The master cleanser was yes. there. Didn't he look great for 63? Yes, Isaac Hayes looked really, really good. I gotta tell you something. I master cleanse. I got the entire deal and the recipe on Advice Hour. And, and I will be listening at four to get the recipe. Are you going to do it? Yes, I am. Look, I um, I got my colon cleansed earlier today, and I was speaking with my um, with my colon, uh, colon, colonoscopy. colonologist. No, uh -huh. it's, that, that, that's the whole little um, <laughs> the colonoscopy. And she says the master cleanse is great, too. She's done it before. Okay. Um, but um, I have, like, eight co-workers within the building that are doing it, and I've heard from tons of listeners who are going to do it right along with it. Yeah, I was listening yesterday, and I said I have to do it. I have to try it. I got the whole recipe. Make sure that you're listening with a pen and a paper. Okay, thank you. Take care, honey. Bye-bye. All right, bye. I am so looking forward to talking with Jody Rotler today. Hello, turn your radio down. Hi. Hello? Okay. Yeah, that might have been a cop or something. It sounds like a... Hello? Hello? Hi, good day. Hi, how are you? Oh, that's a, that's a Caribbean reading, isn't it? Yeah, good. Yes, good day. Uh, yeah, good. Hi, uh, are I on the BLS? Yes. Oh, hi, my name is Bernadette. Hi, Bernadette, it's the Wendy Williams Experience, and this is Wendy speaking. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Bernadette. I have a little problem. I've been talking to Dominic a couple of times about getting my tickets to the Downs and Levers. Okay. The emailing is a problem, though. We got it last night, myself and Tiffany. But we can't get to purchase the tickets. When we put through all the information on the credit card, it says <coughs> time has expired. I don't understand. I'm trying to get the tickets. Okay. Um, where did you go? What website did you go to? to okay. Dominic emailed us, and then we have to click on that pink line just to purchase the tickets. All right. Why don't you go to PayPal.com? Well, what do I go to? Do you have a PayPal account? No. Okay. What borough do you live? Where do you live? Staten Island. Staten Island. Oh, what is that? Staten Island, uh, Brooklyn. Same thing. Staten Island, Jersey. Same thing. No, you're in New York. One two three one four. No, I know, I know, but I'm trying to figure out your clothes. Where do you work? Manhattan. Okay, perfect. How about if I give you the telephone number to Demetrio Furs? They are oh, at... Right, okay, right, okay. Okay, one second, please, please, please. All right, Demetrio, first of all, is a huge sponsor of Dons and Divas 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and now number 6. You know it's hosted by Mary J. Blige. Open bar all damn night long. Hors d'oeuvres walking through the entire party, thanks to our fabulous Shawnee, catered by Shawnee. Um, shout out to Dollhouse Shoes. Thank you for sponsoring. Shout out to B&B &B Jewelers in Wayne, New Jersey. Thank you. Um, special shout out to my WBLS New York family. You know, a special shout out to all the people over at Gilliard Clothing who are, they are sponsoring the entire VIP, which is absolutely fabulous. I just have to tease before I give you the number. Now remember, this is the black party, so you're going to wear black. Wendy, I want my daughter to meet you. She's just home from Iraq. I want you to meet her. Her name is Tiffany. She's oh. a model, but she went off to the army for a minute. She's mm -hmm. back. I wanted to meet you. Well, terrific. All right. Well, let me give you Demetrio first. Um, family, friends, you know, great people, and they happen to uh, be one of the ticket outlets for Don's and Diva's Extravaganza. All right. All right. In Manhattan, they are at 30, 30th Street. Uh, between, I think it's 6th and 7th, so it's right in Midtown. Two, one, two. I'm in the city all week, I'll find it. Okay, get ready, two, get ready, 212. Two. You ready? You ready? Yes, yes, my friend is writing for okay. me. 212. Two. Uh-huh. 695. 695. 8469. 8469. Yes. Hey, Wendy. Oh, you. See you December 22nd at that secret location. I'll see you then. Okay, bye. Okay, bye-bye, thanks. I'm so excited. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Welcome to the show. Hey, Wendy, it's Casey. I saw you yesterday. Thank you. Casey got my um a picture for me. Oh, I just wanted to call and say thank you for signing the picture and giving me the shirt and stuff. Oh, you're welcome, Casey. And um another question: Did Artie get in trouble? Or <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thanks again, Wendy. All right. Thanks, Casey. And have a good one. Bye. Bye bye. Hello, hi, uh, it's Wendy. Hello? 
Hello? What is that? Really? You know, Pharrell's CD, it's it's filled with bitterness. Well, Hello? Hold on, I'll explain. Hi, how are you? Good, Wendy. Listen, I got a question for you. What's going on with Artie Life of the Party? We heard it went down yesterday, baby girl. You got to give it up now. What's going on? Well, he, he left the show. No. I mean, you know, I, I was over at the broadcast. I didn't know. You know, I know his button work. I didn't hear it. You know, and then I hear Trev Hollywood snicker, and I'm like, well, what the hell? Who's at the way I produce him? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks, Wendy. Listen, I want to go hear myself. Thanks, bye. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Um, so anyway, so Pharrell has a new CD coming out. It's supposed to be coming out this month. But I was telling you all that it's not going to come out until February. So apparently, and this is his quote about it, he says, it's absolutely bitter because when I wanted to get in the game, they were like, you dress funny. So I kind of rub it in the faces now of the naysayers. Yeah. Yeah, whole skateboard thing. I guess people won't really look it. I don't know. So you guys, we've got the Wendy Williams people poll question. You'll be uh, probably a bit astonished by the results. We'll talk about that during advice hour. The question yesterday was, have you ever engaged in sexual activity with an animal? Now, this sounds like something crazy to ask, but uh, we're going to talk about this because I'm a little astonished. <laughs> Just who made that question up? Why the... <laughs> well, but of course. It wasn't who you thought. Who made it up? <laughs> Zoe. Zoe? Our virgin bipolar <laughs> intern? <laughs> wow. And she's single? You see with that. <laughs> Tell him, by the way, you were working the headband and the hair, the tease. You teased the crown to your hair. You were working it. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, you all, keep it where you got it. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. Wendy, man. Now, my question is about the tackle. Why is it every time I try to do them, I have an orgasm? Is that normal? Oh. I don't know, but it must be pleasurable. The Wendy Williams experience. Oh boy! Everybody here at the radio station is happy it's Friday. Hey, don't forget about our Christmas party with a purpose. Have you heard the word cameos performing? Oh my gosh. Bobby Blackman and the whole group is crew. Jaheen is performing. And, uh, Donnell Jones, and Vivian Green, and the food, and it's all happening at the Marriott. In Times Square. The Marriott Times Square, I have to tell you, is uh, yeah, of all the hotels in the entire city, there's something that I'm just drawn to that place. I, you know, other than my own house, my meeting place for writing my books is the Marriott Marquis at Times Square. I like to go on the eighth floor and sit in the cozy chairs and have drinks. And me and Karen Rocha, we sit there for hours and nobody kicks us out or anything. There's just something about that place to me that's very homey, very New York, it's very centrally located. There's a bunch of fancy fancy hotels around this. Although I have to admit I've never been in a room there. Yeah. I go there like for drinks and you know meetings and stuff like that. I've never, you know, stayed for a room there, ironically. But um now I'm, I've never been to a party there either, so now I'll see how that is. Times Square. You get your tickets now, call Ticketmaster. I'm sure it's gonna be a fabulous setup. You didn't know the parking's easy because you just park right downstairs. Oh boy. We got Dons and Divas tickets to give away. Oh good. Alright, we'll do that next hour. Quite a few of them. I know. You know what? I have a I think I have a pair of the hour. I probably should give a pair away now. You know what? Maybe that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Alright, give me a moment and I'm going to be going to the telephone to get um somebody for the Dons and Divas passes. You're right, Goose. As a matter of fact, I need to give away two pairs in this break. I probably do. I need to. Oh, the mail's here. Hi, Clarence. How are you doing? All right. All right. I want to give away two pair of goose because look, I have a whole bunch of them. I, I didn't give them away yesterday. Sure. All right. I mean, I have all these giveaway sheets. As a matter of fact, left over from the broadcast. All right. I'm getting ready to go to the phone. From the Wendy Williams Experience. By the way, this hour of the Wendy Williams Experience is sponsored by VH1. I know the rest of the story. The rest of the story is Big Hit 05 comes on this weekend on Sunday night on VH1. Everybody's going to be there. Um, Lindsay Lohan and, uh, you know, Big and 05. It's uh, VH1. It's on the VH1 channel. And shout out to my VH1 family. Happy holidays. I look forward to a lot of prosperous 
2006, Wendy Williams is on fire. Never, never forget. <laughs> hello? VH1, hello? I said Wendy Williams is on fire. <laughs> oh, damn, no. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Anyway, um, let's go to uh, the telephone now and, and see who's going to win for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Hello? Hello? Hi! Wendy? Are you a diva? Wendy? Oh, <laughs> she did God. sound like my mother. <laughs> Mommy? I'm so Wendy? Mommy? Wendy? Yes? Uh, uh, hi, what's your, what's your name? Hi, I'm Roblin, and I'm from Crown Heights. I had called and got you to the show one time, and you had said hello. That was so nice. And um, well, what I was you, hearing would you, about Denzel Washington and tonight Layton. Layton, yeah, we talked about that. She must have been trying to dial while I was saying that the Dons and Divas tickets you call in now. Because, you know, I would like for you to come to my Dons and Divas extravaganza. Oh, my God. I Providing you tell me that you have uh, a, 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 a very, very active, productive, fruitful life going on. What do you do for yourself? Yes, I do, actually. Um, well, I'm a baby today. I work in the city of Manhattan. Okay. And I'm married. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I live a good life. <laughs> you sound very happy. Yes, I am. How old are you? I'm 32. Okay. Uh, are you a nice-looking woman? Yes, I am. Um, actually, I'm with Indian. I'm from Trinidad. You're with what? She's West Indian. She's Trinidadian. West, I'm West Indian, actually. Oh. She yeah. said that, like, don't you know? All West Indian women got it going on. You know what? Actually, on the strength of Goose and my Bayesian roots, I'm giving you these passes. Oh, my God. The next time I'm getting to the winning passes. Well, listen, and so that you can bring uh, somebody with you, whether it's your friend or your husband. Now, remember, this is the um, Dons and Divas extravaganza presented to you by Gilead Clothing, presented to you by uh, Demetrio Furs, presented to you by Martel Exino. Um, it, it's the, the, it's going to be fabulous. It's the black affair. Now remember, you must wear black. Okay. Oh my God. Oh my it's a God. secret location. Oh the entire oh borough of Brooklyn. Is, by the way, shout out to Brooklyn. Brooklyn is heavily buzzing. Yes, shout out to Brooklyn. Come right. Oh, oh and let's see the <laughs> yes, we have a great time. December twenty second. It's a secret location. You'll find out more about the location. Once you come and get your passes. Thank you so much, Wendy. Thank you so much. I love your show and I listen to you all the time. All right. Well, congratulations, Roz, and I appreciate you listening. Hold on a moment, and uh -huh. we're, we're going to take out your information behind the scenes. You know what, um, Shaylin? Here's Roslyn's um, winner sheet, oh, but I'm about to give away another pair as well. And so um, let's uh, go to the telephone and see who else is there. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hey. Wendy? Yeah? Hi, how are you? Hi, what's your name? Dion. Hi, Dion. Okay, so I have a pair of passes for the Dons and Beavis extravaganza in my hands. Okay. But I just need to know a little bit more about you. Do you have anything black and fabulous? I believe I do. Okay, if you don't have it, do you have a few bucks you can maybe go out and get yourself something nice? Yes, I do. That, that means that you work a job. Yes. What do you do for a living? I'm a first agent for, for a food company. At a, for a food company? Yes. And how old are you? 26. Mm. Are you single? Yes. Do you have children? No. Uh, do you have some cute girlfriends? Yes. That's it. You're, you're, do you drink? Yes. Well, well, not that that was a prerequisite, but I'm saying, <laughs> why waste a full night of open bar? All right. Congratulations, Thank Dion. You. I'm going to see you December 22nd in Manhattan for the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. <laughs> it's going to be, as Shalimar and Jody Watley used to say, a night to remember. This is our sixth year putting it on. Shout out to Question Mark Entertainment and Face Down Entertainment. The dudes are putting it down. It's the Dons and Divas Extravaganza, aka Wendy's Funhouse. Painted uh, models and 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 brown juice and champagne and 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 how you doing music and and thug hip hop music and and R and Mary J Blige is hosting. Hello. 
The RSVPs are coming in slowly but surely. Uh, see, um, um, well, Sierra, yeah, she's not going to be able to come because she's down in Atlanta. But okay. she was at Don's and Divas last year. However, uh, Pusha Coles will be there, and Jenna Jameson will be there, and Mr. Marcus will be there, and my man Ronnie Artest will be there, and, and that just starts. But remember, it's all hosted by Mary J. Blige, and I'll see you there, too. All right. All right. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> You're very, 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 I'm in New York. I'm Brooklyn. Okay. Oh, you Brooklyn, too. Brooklyn's yes. heavy. All right, Dion, hold on a moment. We're going to take all your information. Shout out to Brooklyn. Don't forget, if you don't want to win, you just want to go out and get your passes, call Ellen John's Barbershop. 718-385-0440 or Philani Clothing at 718-789-0464. The rest of the boroughs, I got you covered with the telephone numbers and whatnot throughout the day. And we got... Um, Goose, I know we have at least one pair of passes every single hour. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, yesterday... I am, um, you know, when we're back at the broadcast um, for the, the um, health and the training of those community, I don't know how the show sounded. Oh, very good. But um, you know me, I, I have a sick sense of humor. I managed to find a little bit of humor in everything, and I wasn't sure whether my jokes were too much or too little. I wasn't sure whether I was bringing the whole audience down while trying to be compassionate with the portrayal of victims. I did not know. I was almost like doing yesterday's show was like an out of body experience, knowing that you're sitting before people who are about to be homeless again, knowing that, you know, Christmas is here and, um, yeah, yeah, I just, I, please, I just, you know, so, you know, I, I could not talk about our Christmas party with a purpose. It was very difficult to talk about Dons and Divas. It was very difficult to talk about, um, the glamour of life. The glamour of beautiful. life. It was very difficult to gossip about celebrities when at the end of the day, I'm sitting and literally, like, the radio station did not tell me that the victims of Hurricane Katrina were going to be in an on-site audience. Now, what was it like sitting there when they were all looking on at you? Exactly. I mean, it was... I walked in, right? And um, I thought that it was, you know, New Yorkers with a heart who were coming by, dropping off money and, you know, offering for housing and whatnot. And they just happened to grab a seat and grab something to eat in between their lunchtime or whatever. And then they were going on about their business. And you know me, I get so involved with the radio show that I'm not asking people, oh, how do you do? You know, like, like I'm saying hi, but it's like the superficiality of hello because I'm trying to also call about a radio show where other people can listen. I said, um, so what, so what do you do? You've been here for a long time. Don't you have to get back to your job? I asked this off the mic. Exactly. He said, we have a job. We're from New Orleans. And I, I said, what? I said, what about you? And you? And you? And you? Oh my God, Mama Lou, she got to be kidding me. We're over here talking about Nick and Jessica and, and the triviality of life. You know, I had my Demetrius thing. I put my thing down on the floor. I'm like, oh my God. Like all of a sudden, you know, I'm starting to feel guilty. You understand what I'm saying? And it was five hours. The victims are right there. And when I say right there, I mean eight feet away from me. Not off in some stadium at Planet Hollywood. How was it? Sobering, eye-opening. I had a bag of clothes, you know, in my car um, that I specifically bought. I went over to the table. I said, I'm not giving my clothes out randomly. I got people looking at me right here in the face. Here, everybody go through these clothes and see if it's what I gave my donations direct. You know what I mean? Like, like, uh, like uh, uh, I gave direct. Look, there's people in. Not only that, but I, I felt a little bit closer. You know, and I thought the other the other jocks here, Harvey and whatnot, uh, and um and um and Jordan, I thought they did a great job with the broadcast. But with all due respect, I felt a little bit closer to the people because I was, you know, Q ninety three, number one for hip hop and R and B, New Orleans number one station. I was a part of that family before it got rushed away with Katrina. So I felt like you know the people knew me, and I I knew them in a sense. I've done appearances in New Orleans, and my CD came out. I did a signing there, and appearances, and my radio brethren, and. 
And here they are. By the bonus hour, they fled though. That was a, that was a, um, fl that was a, you know, evacuation. They evacuated the scene. And um, it was, it was, um, it was a uh, New Yorkers there. But man, shout out to um, the victims of Hurricane Katrina in our city. You know, New York, despite what you hear, has a huge heart for you all. And, and, and you know, you all just, um, you know, be strong and um, focus. <sighs> Don't do it again. Come on, we're back in the studio today. Life is not over. Everybody's we all got our problems though. But you know what? That's what I love about this radio show. The Hurricane Katrina people still found it in the July. What? What? So good about that part. Like you know, you know, at least there was a little bit of smiling and with the buffoonery, and um, and and we raised housing, money, clothing. I mean, BLS did a great thing yesterday. So shout out to the BLS um, staff. From top to bottom, I think that um, that you guys really did pull it together yesterday, you know. Um, and 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 th and thank you to New York for supporting. All right, we're gonna continue with the break. Jody Watley's coming in today. Yay! It's the Wendy Williams Experience, nonstop till seven o'clock on BLS. I got. Did not got disconnected behind the scenes, honey. She was calling me from behind the wheel of her BMW 545. She said, Wendy, I got a full length mink on and I'm ripping it dons and divas. That's nice. That's hot. Hey, everybody, welcome to the show. If you're just turning us on, it's Wendy Williams. Mm. Guess who um, Nick Lachey's good friend is? I told you this before, but now you see where it all makes sense. Um, AJ Descala, Jamie Lynn Descala Sigler from uh, The Sopranos, Meta Sopranos, uh, now ex-husband. So now, now they're getting their divorce. Nick and Jess are getting their divorce, and Nick and um, AJ spent a a lot of time. Sources are saying in in Vegas, just uh, you know, gambling and carousing, and you know, I guess drowning their sorrows. I mean, both guys stand to make a lap off their women, you know? I guess Jessica Simpson, sorry she didn't sign that prenuptial agreement. Yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. I gotta tell you something, I'm a mess right now. I had this story about Oprah. Yeah, well, you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever with you and your comments. I had a story about Oprah that I wanted to tell you. So there's um there's this golf club in Montecito, California. That's where um her, her home is. And the locals are denying that um well there are two country clubs there. And apparently they're saying that Oprah was turned down her membership application by both country clubs. Now, you know what I always say at the end of the day, you ain't on nothing but a... Now, this is what they said about Oprah. According to um, what's going on, well, first of all, the, the one particular country club, Burnham Wood Country Club, and then the other one is called Knoll Wood Tennis Club. They both rejected Oprah's attempt to join. And according to what people are saying, that is that um, Oprah is too pushy. She, here's a quote from, from the Norwood Country Club. She offered to build a new tennis court at Norwood. This is a very conservative town. But people don't do that, you know. I'll build you a tennis court and then you become a member. But can I give you a tip off? Have you ever known the legend of the Douglas family? Okay, the legend of the Douglas family is basically... Well, if you don't have the complexion connection, then they don't give a rat's behind. It's like legendary in Hollywood, from old man Douglas Kirk to his sons and the whole bit. So, you know, when I heard that, that the Douglases are members of, Michael Douglas happens to be a member of, um, of Montecito Country Club. <clears throat> Um, and, and she was supposedly rejected from that one too, although um, they're not popping up right now. There aren't many black people in the area, basically. And uh, I guess, you know, 
And it's only just one of the, like, I'll teach her, you know, money can't buy you, you know, and so, you know, I'm going to see a couple man, I can't wait. <clears throat> I'm hosting, as a matter of fact, a cocktail party over at B. Smith's restaurant, either before or after. Cocktail party, yeah. She's got a nice restaurant, she makes good food. You know, Elton John isn't the only one getting married. George Michael's marrying his lover also. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, people are getting it together. Guess who's getting their own sitcom? <laughs> Reverend Al Sharpton. Right now, he's in talks for a sitcom on CBS called Al in the Family. That's according to Al and I'm going to get the set up and watch what I wanted to do now. And I, uh, Michelle Rodriguez, little hell again, how you doing? And her friend Cynthia Watros were arrested within 15 minutes of each other. Uh, Cynthia is also on lost with Michelle Rodriguez. This all happened last night while we were all sleeping, actually early when Thursday morning, it'll be Wednesday night, it'll be Thursday morning, on suspicion of drunk driving. They were both released on $500, uh, after they posted the $500 bail, and both of their court date is December 29th. And Michelle Rodriguez, she's the one from Jersey City who, who beat her lover's ass in the, in the apartment, right? Do remember that? Taryn, do I have that correct? I think so, yes. I heard that story before. Yeah, because she's from uh, right over there, right across the river. She's from Jersey City, I hope on one of those things. And she beat that woman behind. <laughs> and the cops got involved in everything. She's pretty though. She can go long and short too, just like um, Tony Braxton to me. Michelle Rodriguez can. I think. You know, when Oprah was on Letterman last night, did anybody in the room see that? I didn't see it. You know, the funny thing is, I was up late that night, late last night, and I was watching the TV land and Ian stuff. I totally forgot that Oprah was on Letterman. Well, we're the only ones because uh, the show garnered 13 million viewers to watch them make ice. Ah, uh, nice. They say that's the um, highest rating that um, David Letterman has had since February of 1994. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. I heard there was a very really good kiss of Kissy Nice for us, though. But what are we supposed to see? Them fighting? I don't know. In the back of my mind, I'm always ready to see, uh, you know, dust kicked up. And when I don't see it, I'm like, oh. It's even soft. <laughs> remember when, remember when Diane uh, Sawyer interviewed Whitney Houston? She gave us all the drama we liked. So you know, pretty much that's what that's what I like. You know, all the twisted body. I just remember Whitney was hugging the body, hugging the collection of body, and you know, twisting her body and stuff. Oh God! What was Oprah wearing last night? I knew she'd be wonderful. Mm, well, I want to tell you about Anna Nicole Smith. So the Livey organization is suing Trim Spa over Anna Nicole Smith appearing at a Philadelphia concert back in, remember Live 8 back in July of, um, uh, early July? Allegedly she was drunk and Stan Valley so the Live 8 organization is suing Trim Spa because the, the assumption from Live 8 is she would never have been so drunk and near naked that she didn't lose all that weight and have all that confidence from Trim Spa. So we're going to sue you since she hasn't yet gotten the old man's money. There's nothing to sue from her. Uh, uh, is that a with that? Hey man, I told his brother. He told me he had a very good surprise. The surprise was that he turned him over. Everybody needs some. Should I leave? Like, is that selfish to my son? Come get some. Let me tell you, Wendy. It's really a trouble with a dude. Everybody stop. I'm having a problem with my fiance and his family. I was in a relationship with this girl for like 18 months. She told me the relationship meant nothing. Oh, oh. Holy trauma. Call Wendy right now. 1-866-GET-WENDY. Facts, Wendy. At 866 -866 Six, Wendy Facts. Wendy, can you give me advice on plastic surgery? Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. It's Advice Hour here on the Wendy Williams Experience, and you can reach me at 
at 6-6 Get Wendy. And um, make sure that your radio is turned down and have your question ready. I'll listen to a bit of your story and I'll offer you a solution as best I can. Remember, I'm not a professional. I'm just a woman with a microphone and an opinion. But for my medical minute, I am coming to you with the Master Cleanse Diet. This is something that I've been hearing about for several years. Finally, I just had it. You know, my man Steve Harvey was interviewing Isaac Hayes yesterday, or the day before yesterday. And Isaac, <clears throat> Isaac and I used to be coworkers years ago at a different radio station. And, you know, Isaac has always had a pretty incredible body for an older dude. But he is now 63 years old. And I know Isaac is a Scientologist, but one thing that he also is is a master cleanser. Then my, my radio sister brethren, um, Robin Quivers at soon to be eh, 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 um, also lost a lot of money. I mean, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Also lost a lot of weight um, by going on the master cleanse. And I hear her talk about it with the cayenne pepper and, and stuff like that. Then my, my everything, Nicole, um, her Pilates teacher, without even doing the Pilates during the time, because this is before the teacher actually started teaching, lost 13 pounds in seven days on the Master Cleanse diet. And I got my colon, colon cleanse earlier today. I was talking to my um, colon cleanser, and I was asking her about the Master um, Cleanse diet. And she was saying, you know what? It works. I don't know where I've been with this diet. You know, I'm always looking for, you know, the newest and the latest and what's going on. So I, I got the recipe for everybody. I promised you I'd bring it today. Um, there's also a book accompanying the Master Cleanse Diet. but um, And I need you to probably pick up the book. But I can also tell you that I got this. I'm going to give you the website where I got the recipe. Okay. Um, this is It says, as used by Robin Quivers. So this is what it says. I personally... I've done this cleanse nine times in the last two years for periods ranging from 10 to 28 days. And I have canceled my wife three times. Okay, so this is not Robin talking. This is somebody else talking. I've canceled my wife three times, 27-year-old son twice. And in January 2004, more than 110 people on the Master Cleanse Bulletin Board, which supplied most of the information for my book at the right. Okay, so this is the author of the Master Cleanse book talking. His name is Stanley Burrow, B-U-R-R-O-U-G-H-S. And the book is called Master Cleanse. Some people call it the Lemonade Diet, but the book is called the Master Cleanse Diet. Okay. And um, they say you feel vital. You, you drink, not eat, and you lose a lot of weight. So this is what they say you do. For a minimum of 10 days, drink. Are you ready for the recipe? Because I'm going to do the shopping over the weekend. We'll all start together on Monday. You pick up your own. Two tablespoons of fresh squeezed lemon or lime juice. Two tablespoons of organic grade B maple syrup. Mm. One tenth of a teaspoon or more of cayenne pepper. Mm. One cup equaling eight ounces of purified or spring water, not uh, water from your tap. They say drink six to 12 glasses of this mixture daily. No food is eaten, nor any vitamin supplements taken during the cleanse. If you get hungry, have another glass of drink. If you're overweight, you may use less maple syrup. If you're underweight, use more maple syrup if you wish. If you're worried about losing weight, the only thing you can possibly lose is mucus, waste, and disease. Healthy tissue will not be eliminated when you go to the bathroom. Wow, you mean to tell me I won't be doing this anymore? <laughs> wow. I'm master cleansing. All right, in a nutshell, that's it, everybody. I'm not going to break it down. Shout out to Elisa Payne in the booking office. Maybe we'd like to book the author of the Master Cleanse Diet on the show one day next week. 
Yeah, everyone keeps calling and asking about that. Do they, Shayla? Yeah, what's the name of it? Where okay. can they find it? What I'm going to do is I'm going to give everybody the website, and then I must get to the telephones because people are having problems. Ebony um, um, wants to know whether she should pursue something with the white boy, and um, then there's somebody anonymous who's been dating somebody for two years, and the person won't commit. So people need uh, help. Here's the um, Here's the website www.therawfoodsite.com slash mastercleanse.htm. Hey, Webbies, what does that mean? Called HTML. It's like the, the, uh, the page. Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they ran. Okay. <laughs> So that's www.therawfoodsite.com slash mastercleanse.htm. L. It doesn't say L, it says M. They run out of space. <laughs> Should there be an L at the end? Yeah. All right, put an L at the end. Four. <laughs> that's how you look after you lose that weight. <clears throat> All right, let's go. Hold on. <clears throat> Exactly. All right, let's go to line number six for Ebony. Hi, Ebony. Hi. Uh, now, obviously, you're a black girl by your name. Yes. Although white, although there are black girls named Bianca. You know, well, what I mean? I'm a very black girl. But isn't it funny? Black people will name their daughter Bianca, but white people don't name their daughter Ebony. All hell to the no. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you know, you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay, so exactly. we're, we're talking about you met this really cute white guy, and you want to know if you should pursue something. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> because, I don't know, we met a long time ago. We okay. met over the phone, and he lives a long way. We talked for a long time. We used to work together. Same company, different places. He's way somewhere. I'm way down here. And he came down to see me once, and it didn't happen. Then he came down again, and it just kind of, you know, we had this chemistry, and I'm trying to see where I, where I need to go. Well... Only thing that's turning me off about it is that long distance relationships aren't my favorite. How, how yeah. far do you live from each other? We're like a thousand miles apart, literally. How many, how many hours is that to drive and fly? Like distance? fifteen. Fifteen. Oh um, yeah. You know what? I applaud you for being open minded because when you're single, <clears throat> you really have to do exercise a lot of your options, but. That wouldn't work, even if it's with a black guy, I would say. I can't say it wouldn't work, but I wouldn't suggest it. Okay. Mm. Put that where? Okay. Thanks, Ab. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, now, line number four, JC is 30 years old, and a friend is marrying someone from another country. JC? Yes, what's up? Okay, what's going on? Well, this girl always putting her kids for me. Don't, don't put her kids first, oh, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just tired of it. I'm the kid's godfather, and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of her doing it. Um, she go out and meet these men, whatever, what have mm -hmm. you. But, all right, make a long story. So she went to on a cruise, and she met some guy over in the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. And she's supposed to be marrying him on her 12. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he actually hates him, but she didn't want to tell me that he was Haitian because I was going to get in his, you know, stuff. Now, what is the deal with Haitian? Why? What's, what's the matter with that? Haitian is like the, the lowest chain. You know, like, that, as far as dummies is concerned, you got the Africans and then you got the Haitians. They, some, they, they don't have no common sense. They stupid. Goose. Yeah, a lot of them. They kind of crazy. They all bunched up in the house. They got the same <laughs> idea. What? Crazy. Yeah. Why you say that? Because they are like that. They don't really <laughs> don't have no manners. Oh my you know? I need Will Simmons on the phone. He's my comedian friend who happens to be Haitian. Will, is this true? Uh Sakpase. Usher. Wyclef, is this is this true? What? So anyway, so back to your girlfriend. So, who sounds a mess. Your your friend who happens to be a, a female. Yeah, so I spoke to her the other day. I said, listen, you don't know this man. You're going to move him into your house. You're going to bring him With the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she got kids. Mm -hmm. She's going to move him into the house. I don't even know. And, yeah. and then the baby said the other day, she said, we're going to have another uncle. We wow. Got a lot of uncles. She didn't even pick that up. Okay. Okay. What's your question to me? 
My question is, I'm tired of her going through it, and then she cuts me off. Every time she get a man, she cuts me off. She don't want me to come around or whatever. And she's going to do it again, so there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. I mean, you can you can call her a foul woman. You can curse her out. You can email her job. She'll cut you off and make you look like the crazy one. Nah, but I'm far from crazy. I just feel for them kids. Yeah, she you know what I was... Have to live with. She said you got to live with the consequences, you well, know, if anything was to happen. This guy could be a rapist. You know how them foreigners, yeah. the swell of country folks, like, touch it and all that backward stuff? You know what I'm saying? All that stuff, that the, the secret, family secret stuff. I'm not going to want all of that. And then you're going to go to another country. What's going to happen to them? You're going to get deported? Then them kids got to live with the nonsense? Look what happened with that police officer. You know what I'm saying? The detective. You know what I'm saying? He's supposed to trust them folks. And he goes and, um... What's his name? Clifton Lawrence. So, you, so you think the foreigners are 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 um, no good? If they do it, so if, if we got a detective, Clifton Lawrence, who just got arrested mm -hmm. the other day for molesting a blue boy, you know what I'm saying? He's supposed to be law enforcement. You know what I'm saying? Crazy folks. Are, wow. The foreigners are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Um, you're a regular Archie Bunker, JC. I'll tell you, boy. Why am I Archie Bunker? Yeah, you just spew it like you like you feel it. Yo, I tell you like this. And you cut me off on the phone the other day when my son was on the phone the other day. Uh, oh, oh my gosh, that's wrong. You put your kid on the phone. Oh my gosh, I didn't do that. You know what? I was at the broadcast. I was mad that they cut you off. He said he's gonna get you. Oh, see, at five years old, they know that. Did you let yeah, him, he said he's going to get you. You let him play you with... You watch out. You then, ain't pull your panties out your butt this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's super proud, Phil. <laughs> yeah, you know you love me, man. You're killing me. Yeah, JC, there's nothing you can do except for be there okay. for the kids. One more thing. With that world thing, yeah. world is the man. When he get out of jail, you got to get world up there. You got to get little Kim wow. and Michelle Farrell. Wow. Wow. Michelle Farrell. She see her sing Mariah Carey under the table. Yeah. Of course I have. She used to uh, scroll around with that friend of mine. Actually, he looked better than her. I was surprised that, you know, how he wasn't really doing anything. It turns out. On the show. Yeah. And you know that you're a your butch queen, right? <laughs> I love you. Stop it. I'm saying I love you more, Wendy. Hey, hey. Hold on, hold on for a moment, okay? Hold on, so really put him on hold. Look, um, yeah. Damn it. Where's my, um, hold on. Uh, hold on a moment, uh, Bitter. I, I want to talk to you behind the scenes. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm trying to find somewhere on Oh, is she here? Damn. All right, line number one, she's pregnant and she's trying to. Well, I don't have any hold. Why? She's trying to trap a man. She's pregnant. That's right up her house. <laughs> yeah, she's admitting it. Hey, hey, Anonymous, I know you're 27 years old. You hold on. I'm coming right at you. And uh, the Black Archie Bunker, you hold on, too. <laughs> Wendy, man. I've been talking to this young lady. She called me home. I was listening to your show. And she um, says that she doesn't know any straight guys that listen to the Wendy Williams show. No, plenty of straight guys listen to the show. All right, so yeah. So what should I tell her? Just it, tell us how you feel. The Wendy Williams experience. BLS. Oh boy, this is good news. Shout out to Nicole. Uh, she says in parentheses, Filipina represent. <laughs> hey, Nicole. Nicole says that she did Master Cleanse for 10 days last year and she lost 15 pounds. She gained only five back. She says she's doing it again this year. She's shooting for 20 days. Shut up. Shut up. If I could blink my eyes and make this Monday, I would. Wow. Anyway, uh, let's get to line one because there's a lady. Hello? Hello. Hi, is this you? You're pregnant? I'm anonymous, yes. And I wasn't trying to trap him. I was saying I didn't know if I should tell the person who I was dating and I'm pregnant by because the last time we kind of saw each other, oh. he said, I don't need another woman trying to trap me. And we haven't spoken in about three or four weeks. So he doesn't know. Wow. Uh-uh. 
what was the nature of you all's sex? Was it, was it lovey dove sex? Or no, we sex? were just dating and we were having a good time dating. And, um, you know, we had sex, of course, probably too soon and no unprotected fun. drunk. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we didn't really discuss it, but the next time we did have sex and he started without a condom, he stopped suddenly and was like, I don't need another person trying to trap me. We got to an argument and we haven't spoken in the past four weeks. What, what do you want to do? I don't think that I want to keep it because I don't want a situation like that. Okay, then, then there's no need to, to, to... Oh, do you need money from him to... to at the point right now, I don't have insurance right now, but I wouldn't even feel comfortable asking him for it because I don't want to give him an opportunity to say you just want money from me. And I have one of my girlfriends suggesting that I keep it because of how old I am and it's the fact that I've had two procedures before already. Oh. He's like, you don't need to do this again to yourself. And yeah, well, yeah, you're 27 years old. You've already, you already had two abortions. Mm-hmm. And I have one son, and, and he's fine and healthy, but she, she just suggested... Well, not only that, but you don't have insurance. I'm not saying that, you know, if you go to a clinic, you get scraped, but I'm just mm -hmm. saying that, you know... Um, it, you know, in, in clinics, don't they kind of line them up and you don't even sterilize the equipment? They pretty much just take <laughs> one knitting needle and scrape all you at one time. <laughs> you know, throw you back out. You know, you know, clinic mentality. That's, just, that's the medical field, period. If you don't have insurance, exactly. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Okay, well, so you're, forget him. This is, about, this is about, I mean, not, not forget him. You're going to get your child for the child, but this is about you mm -hmm. right now. You are at the crossroads. You had two abortions. You were 27. Now, how old is your son? He's four. He's four. He's a, little, he's a big boy now. Okay. It's time for him to grow up. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. And one my girlfriend suggested to keep it feels that this would help kind of keep me grounded and kind of slow down. Why? Right. It didn't work uh, when you were 23 and you had a baby. Yeah. yeah. So, any advice? <laughs> Just forget him. I know that. Forget about him. And well, focus on me. well, yeah. Forget about his reaction to it and focus okay. on you. I always think of advice hour when you ask me a question. What would I do in in this position? Can you afford to take care of two children? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, it would be a struggle. I'm not. I mean, I am educated. I have my you know my masters and mm -hmm. things like that. So it would not be. It wouldn't be as comfortable as I am right now. It would be an extra pain eventually, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I see my, I saw my mom do it, with, you know, two kids, single mom, so. If I, if, if I were you, I can't decide. <laughs> I can't decide because you know what? You can meet the love of your life at 32 and all of a sudden you're coming with two kids. Yeah. You know, one child is what I'm worried about because I don't have that person in my life yet. And, and two babies' fathers. So that's a, like a, like, I'm mean, just between me and you. It's, mm -hmm. it's a sloppy luck. Yeah. You know? <laughs> And one baby's father is going to be a protester. So now all of a sudden the new man in your life is going to think you're some, you can maybe get the impression that you're some sort of tramp. I just, I, you know what? Um, I can't, I can't even answer you. I wish you well, though. I can't even answer Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the time, though. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Damn. Take care. Bye-bye. Um, thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, wow. Well. Mm. Is Elsie on line number three? Elise? Okay. Is there anybody else on hold? I think I have. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't have the computer screen. Up, but go ahead and press. Hello. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. What line is that? Fine. Okay. Is this anonymous with a friend who's an alcoholic? Yes, it is. And you're trying to intervene. I am. Do tell. I mean, give me a little background. Okay. Um, he has been drinking since he was sixteen. Mm -hmm. And he wants to stop. He's 22 now. Mm -hmm. Wow, Wendy. <laughs> well, I know it's a sad story. It's, mm -hmm. just, it's not an interesting story, though. But um, I want to hug him, and I don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. You guys, are who's your friend, friend? Mm -hmm. Okay, damn you. Wow. Well, once you clean him up, you're going to send him off to meet some other girl. Are you trying to straighten up to to make a good man out of him? No, that's that's not. Oh, he is your man. No, he's not my man. Well, kind of sort of. Are you sharing a man with another woman? No, 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 no. No, he, he doesn't have anybody. Oh, but me. <laughs> <laughs> so you feel as though if you can do this Mother Teresa act, act and fix him up, then he'll sober up 
marry you, whisk you off, and and happily ever after? No, not at all. Oh. I mean, we speak. No, Wendy. No, we talk. Well, if he really wants to clean himself up, what the hell is wrong with him going to get help? Why why can't he find his own rehab? I don't understand. You're 25 years old. Don't you have a life of your own what? that includes a, a career? Yes. Okay, he's 22. At yeah. 22 years old, what's he doing for himself that he can't get on the web and check himself into rehab if that's what he wants to do? See, because my whole thing is is that your support as a friend is not to find the places and lead the way. Your support as a friend is to be there and answer the phone and go out for lunch with and, and have conversation with, not to take him to the place. He's a grown man, and if you ever expect him to be able to stand on his own feet, he's got to do one of the hardest things that he'll ever do in his life, which is quit alcohol on his own. Find a clinic or whatever that he feel comfortable with that takes his insurance or whatever and make it happen. And you're just supposed to be support system. So, yeah. Oh, and you want to intervene? I do. I thought you said he wants to quit. He's, well, he says he wants to quit. Right? Well, then, then there's no intervention unless until he's ready to quit. Interventions don't work, especially with a woman that you're just sleeping with and you're not in love with. And, you know, like, you know, there are no big consequences. Interventions don't work. Not not in this particular case, I don't think. Is there anything I can say? Anything I can say? Does he know that he has a problem? Of course. Ask, yeah. ask him when he's, when he's ready to quit. It's a new year. How about a new life? Maybe you can offer him some places in the area. The, the, the sleep-ins and the, the day programs. Go ahead. I mean, you know, the weekend's here. Spend a little time on the computer. Find out what you can find out. That way, when you go to him with the conversation about new year, new life, you can give him... Um, all the information. Okay. Right down to how much everything costs and what kind of insurance they take. If you if you really want to get it in, I do. I really do. All right. Thank you, Wendy. Good good luck. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Bye bye. <coughs> um, I have to give away. <coughs> excuse me. Some some Don's and Divas passes. And um, don't forget, this is December twenty second. Oh, whoa, 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 I almost slipped. Uh -huh. It's December 22nd. This is a black party hosted by Mary J. Blige. Shout out to everybody in New Jersey. Jersey, I've got numbers for you. Get a pen and paper, okay? If you don't want to, you know, stay around to listen to win, then you can simply call. But let's go to the telephone now. We can incorporate giving away Don's and Divas tickets with advice if you have a question, too. Hello? Hello. Hi. How you doing? Uh-oh, you sound very sophisticated. What's your name? Alasia. Oh, Alasia. Alasia. It, it sounds beautiful on the name alone. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, listen to her laugh. <laughs> what do you do for yourself, Alasia? I am an account supervisor at a trucking company. An account supervisor. Very nice. Uh, do you have kids? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, can you still drop it like it's hot? Of course, all the way to the ground and oh. back up. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Irvington, okay. New Jersey. Nice to be able to Jersey. We'll definitely be there really thick. As a matter, as a matter of fact, I'm about to give telephone numbers to um, how to connect in Jersey. Everybody in Jersey seems to know Race and Qua. Do you know Race and Qua? Yes. Oh my gosh! Which one do you know or both of them? Oh, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> well congratulations you won't have to be calling them for tickets i'm gonna thank give you. you some tickets okay alasia thank you i have advice for your for your um people that are going to the johnson divas yeah okay go ahead okay on the magazine of mary j Blige the source okay and the one with uh, monique on it uh -huh. they have great black outfits they have a line like the whole fashion section of nothing but all black. In the Source magazine? In the Source and the one with Monique on the cover. Monique. I think that one is Essence or... Oh. But I hear the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's Slim Girls. Yeah. Um, you know, and throughout the book. Great black stuff. Great black different styles, how to work it. Yeah, accessories yeah. and all. Yeah. So all those that are stumped out there, it, it, to, to me, black is like an impossible color to be stumped on, you know? It is, but you know what? When people think about 
black. Some people, you know, they're like, oh, okay, black or black this. But they don't think about the accessories or how many different styles it comes in. Accessories are okay. Exactly. Mm. And then you're working. Yeah, exactly. Have you ever been to a Don's and Davis extravaganza? No, and I was dying to go. Mm -hmm. they I'm are. dying to go. But I'll tell you one thing. What? I'm going to buy my best friend her ticket. Wow. For, what is that, for Christmas? Yes. yes. And you know what's going to happen afterwards. I'm going to look on me, but I'm bringing my best friend. And then mm -hmm. the Halloween is going to happen afterwards. Wow. <laughs> Hey, listen, uh, it's going to be a big time open bar going on. Are you and your best friend going to be taking yourselves or are you going to be kissing oh, on the dance floor? Yeah. You gonna kiss, yeah. Are you going to kiss on the dance floor? Of course. Does your man get me anything? He loves it. So, would he kiss you and kiss her all yes, on the dance floor? This is why it's Wendy's Fun House. These are my, these are my people. Hey. These, these are my people. Grown and sexy and doing very tastefully. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Alasia, I'm still at the party. Hold on a second. We're going to take your information, okay? Thank you. More tickets coming up next hour and advice hour continues here on the Wendy. Oh, oh, Jersey. Here's the telephone numbers. I'm sorry. Okay, you're going to call Race and Qua. Um, 973-418-3019. Or you can always go to the Heat Clothing Store right off Bloomfield Avenue in Montclair, and you can call them. They've got tickets. 973-509-3400. Jersey will be in there. The Dons and Divas Extravaganza, December 22nd, hosted by Mary J. Blige. It's going to be fabulous. Keep it here. Doggy bed, $35 on debit MasterCard. Doggy dish, $12 on debit card. Doggy food, $8 on debit card. This is a bold question. Are you ready for this one? Do you have any people? Um, I asked you guys, what have you arranged? And a sexual activity with an animal. The bipolar virgin, the virgin intern, came up with that one. Five percent of you all said yes, <laughs> and ninety-five percent, of course, said what? Hell no! Back there. Exactly. <laughs> I always like to know a little bit more about you. Um, how about this one for today? Do your children believe in Santa Claus? Yes or no? Now, of course, that would depend on... Um, okay, how about we do this? We have to be more specific with this one, although I guess it's too late to go back to the website. Oh, okay, well, how? You know what? Do your children believe in Santa Claus? Yes or no? And you can go to thewendywilliamsexperience.com. In the meantime... Ugh, I hit the computer and erased the page of the people that are calling with problems. But, and however, just hit something, Goose. It's live. Yeah. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Fine, thanks. Okay, my, my problem is this. Mm -hmm. I'm 30, and the guy that I like who's in my school to take a master's program. He has to be about 24, 24. I've never had a master's program before. He's very white, blue eyes, red, blonde hair. I don't know how to approach him if I should because... I'm a thicker black girl, and I don't know what he's doing, but I would like to make him my business, you know, very soon. So I don't know how to approach him. I don't know how to finesse it. What do I do? Jeez. I mean, if I was a guy, I think I would like that. that you know, I, I want to make you my business. Real soon. Like, you know, it's kind of like pushy. I, yeah, I like your delivery. <laughs> but you know what? I'm the only black girl in the class. He knows that I'm a single mom, but I'm very hard to power. He also knows that I have a problem with white people. Oh. Like, we always talk. He's always telling me to come sit next to him. But I don't, you know, sometimes white people are just like that. They're just very, they're nice like that. I don't know if he's into six girls, about 160, 165, and he's, he just looks great. I don't know what he's doing. I'm going to kick him. Why don't you, um, why don't you, um, invite him for a study session or something? And it doesn't have to be at your, your dorm or your apartment or whatever. It could be something as simple as, you know, in the library. No, I don't have the time for that. I need to know whether I should go in for the kill or not. Yes, go for it. Because at the end of the day, he's just a man. Black, yep. white, whatever. He's just a man. They all like the same thing. No, but what if he says, oh my God, no, then I'm going to be off cut. So what? You get over it. You're grown enough to lay down and have a baby. You're definitely grown enough to get over uh, a little, you know, I'm not interested in you. Come on. 
okay with me. I mean, you sound like a really great aggressive girl. Like like one of those kind of girls who doesn't wallow in her grief or at least knows how to, you know, take control of a situation. No, honey, when I want a situation, I make a situation. I'm good. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you. And good luck. Thank you good Island, Wendy. Thank you and good luck. Go for it. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You're welcome. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Line number three. Um, she has a friend whose boyfriend is hitting on her. Hi. Oh, oh she hung up. Well, you know, I don't know what you want me to say to a situation like that, like coastline or whatever. If you have a friend and you and her boyfriend is hitting on you, what you need to do is face him head on. Because a real woman knows how to handle something like that without having to pipe up to the girlfriend and saying, Hey girl, your man is hitting on me. A real woman first of all, a real woman knows how to stop that dead in the tracks virtually without saying a thing past seven words. A real woman, and you're 34 years old, honey, and we just got disconnected, but 34 years old, step, step to him immediately. And a really, really real woman knows just with making eye contact, I am not the one. Every once in a while, though, doesn't your dude have like a thing that's so cute, you don't even want to look at him directly in the room, you keep looking down, you just look down. As soon as you make eye contact with the person, as soon as you make eye contact, trouble? Terry, do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> You meet the shorties, and they're like, you just don't even get oh, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Because you might see something, or you might see that I'm... Mm -mm, mm -mm. And I'm not even going there. What? Yeah. See, a real woman knows how to handle all that without, without having to talk to her girlfriends about it, or spill her tea to her man, or her best friend, or whatever. You know, just... Look down. Go want some more chicken wings? <laughs> Anybody want any more brown juice? You just look down at the ground. Mm -hmm. Mike is on line number one. Or is that seven? I think it's line seven. It's line seven. Mike? 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 Huh? Mike? No, this is a Mike. All right, hold on a second. What line is that? One? Yeah, I'm here. Mike, okay, go. Mike is also 34. And his wife used to do threesomes, but not since marriage. Well, I mean, that, that's what we do to get you. But once you make honest women of us, hell no. That don't go. <laughs> Mike, what is your question? You and your wife have been married for a while. I've been married for like about two years now. Okay. And you you want to go back into the three something? You know, I mean, it was part of the plan yeah. from the beginning, you know? I bet. We were having fun with my friends. We have friends and everything. You know, we go to like swing clubs and, and stuff like that, right? And then we got married and now... Uh, Everything shut down. I mean, I went from getting like, you know, getting like <laughs> Wendy with the music. Then I went from getting like twice a day to like not even getting once a month. Anymore. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wait a minute. Bad. This is not about threesome. This is also about sex just between the two. Yeah. yeah, to the point, like our friend called me up the other day talk about why don't you divorce her? Now, that's supposed to be her friend. Wow. And that really scared me. I mean, my question to you is this, I know you were gonna ask me that. Does not being able to get, you know, intimacy in a relationship constitute a ground for you to break up or, you know, divorce? Yes. Yes. Because I'm very frustrated at this point. Yes. No sex or very little sex constitutes divorce, depending on what you what you were set up with prior to getting married. She set you up with all kind of freaky sex and multiple times a day? Everything. And now, now, you're, now you're lucky if you get it three times a month? Yeah, that comes to Three times point. a month, I'll be happy. What? Like once a month. Jeez. And how old is she? She's only 28. Oh, it's not going to get any better, brother. Divorce. 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 But do me a favor. Please don't get with her friend. Don't break her heart. Just divorce the whole situation. Clean and... Wendy, man. You never met me. You don't know me. You live at my house. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. You don't do shit with me. But talk about me. Why could you say? That's all good. I have loved this woman since I first heard her. Her career spans 20... Damn, you walked fast. Look at you. Hi, Jody. <laughs> Oh, wow. oh. <laughs> it's very nice. Jody Watley is here. Yeah, well, yeah, I was going to give you a pull. No, no, come sit down now, woman. Come sit down. Have a seat. Look at you. Okay, let me just see if I recognize you, if I saw you. Absolutely. 
You have personality teeth. And of course the eyes. They're the yes. eyes. Yes. <laughs> you look beautiful. Thank Your you. hair. Is that natural? What, what, what's well, going on? you know, show business. Yeah, I understand. Years. Listen, you were one of the first black girls to have the hair all the way down here. You sported That's it all right. the time. That's right. You're one of the first for a lot of things, Jody Watley. You raised the bar for women in this business. You did a Herb well, Ritz ga a Gap campaign. Me. I did. It was uh, the first... Uh, campaign at the Gap Theater where they used uh, recording artists and I think if I'm not mistaken I was the only black girl uh, in there. You so. were the only black girl doing a lot of things back yeah. then. Yeah. I well, paid the price, you me, know, yeah. good and bad. Let me know. just recap a bit of your career and then I want to talk with you. First of all, Jody, did you start out as a soul train dancer? I did. Yes. And, I was um, 10. Jeez. <laughs> but you looked, what, 17 at that point? No, 10. 10 in your house. Dancing on the TV like everybody yeah. else. Yeah. <laughs> Damn you. Um, seven solo CDs. This is after Shalimar. Right. Um, you were part of Shalimar, which is a fabulous group. You um, performed for Band Aid. Right. Do They Know It's Christmas with George Michael and Duran Duran and back then. Bob Geldorf's groundbreaking all star right. lineup. Rizzo in Greece. That's right. First black girl to do that. <laughs> and now you've got the Looking for a New Love 2005 remix. Right, which was number one, which is the first time that's done. Same song 15 years after the fact. Plus you've got um, the Christmas song, which we're Yeah, happy which I with. brought, which yeah. has never been heard anywhere. I brought it for you. Let's play it out in the background as we talk. I'm sorry we can't yeah. stop for it. I'm very no, cool. excited to meet you. Thank you. Me too. I, um, I've, uh, I was looking forward to this day. Now tell me, first of all, where have you been? When, what year did your last CD come out? 2001, Midnight Lounge, right? 2003. Three. Midnight Lounge oh. came out in 2003. Uh, you know, very chill, ambient. Um, People Magazine had said I got my groove back, but I never lost it. Yeah. yeah. It's just, uh, you know, with the landscape of uh, radio being different, mm -hmm. uh, with hip-hop being so uh, predominant, um, I've continued to make music pretty much every two to three years. Uh -huh. Um, I tour a lot, do a lot of uh, club things, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, gay pride stuff. Are you going to be at GLAAD over? Are you uh, in town for the um, Gay Men's Health Crisis Dance-A-Thon? I am here for the Dance-A-Thon. Me too, is, I'll be there yeah, tomorrow night too. So, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Are you going to perform? Also, I am. Oh. I'm doing 14 minutes. <laughs> are you are you picky about what songs you perform? Are you are you very temperamental? Like you won't yes. do? Okay, what, what, what won't you do? I generally don't do Shalimar songs. I was going to ask you, do you do But I'm doing one tomorrow night. Which, which one are you going to do? I don't want to ruin it. I probably shouldn't even said I was doing it. But mm. because uh, there's been sort of uh, with Madonna's record and they're talking about a return to disco and dance. And I'm thinking, well, dance music never went no. anywhere. Right. And uh, I don't know, it just made me think. It's like, you know what? And every time I come to New York, I hear this particular Shalimar song. It's a dance cut. It was when we were doing our disco best. And so um, in honor of that, I'm going to do it. But I, I generally don't do Shalimar songs. Is that, do you and Howard Hewitt get along? <clears throat> we don't see each other. Uh, when I left the group, um, and I'm, I'm working on uh, a book and I, I think uh, inspired by you and your books uh, actually thank you but, uh, <laughs> thank you but there's so much to to say but I, I don't have a um, a relationship with him in that I don't see him or anything mm -hmm. like that but when I left the group uh, it was it was uh, turbulent and tumultuous but the main reason I don't do the songs is because uh, when I was when I got in Shalimar, I was still in high school, uh -huh. and I am the classic story of a teenager who knew nothing, and we signed uh, really dreadful contracts, yes. and I don't get royalties for Shalimar songs, oh. and so the catalog of music that I'm most passionate about is Jody Watley because that is the one that pays my bill so that's the one Jody that want do. me is what your yeah, DJs used me. to call you when we'd spin <laughs> don't you want me we'd go, is Jody want me in New York so, that's when Hot uh, yeah, 103.9 was a big deal I was the overnight yeah. jock there oh, Jody want me <laughs> yeah yeah so Jody uh, were you romantically involved with any of the Shalimar members no. you know, young, oh naive, Jeffrey pretty, like, no Jeffrey, Jeffrey Daniels Jeffrey Daniel and I, um, in fact, he was my first boyfriend. Were you a virgin? 
That'll be in the book. Oh. I, you know, I, got, I can't give it all away. Yeah, no, 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 no. I've got to, you know, yeah. the, the drama of the book. Yeah. But Jeffrey and I um, danced together on Soul Train. Mm -hmm. And uh, another tumultuous uh, uh, relationship. Um, and um, uh, we'll that'll be in the book. <laughs> now, um, are you married? I'm not married. Have I'm you divorced. ever been married? Oh, okay. How long were you married? I was married for two years, but I was with uh, this person for many years. We got married and it fell apart. Yeah. And uh, children? I have two children. How old are they? I have a 22-year-old and I have a 13-year-old. My daughter is 22, and my son is uh, he just turned 13. With your ex-husband? Yeah. So you've been um, divorced for how long now? A while. Years. 22. I years. lost track. About 20, 10 years. Uh -huh. are, um, are you in love now? I'm in love with me. Yeah. I've learned to yeah. love me and I think, not to sound like a cliche, but I, I think uh, we run from ourselves yes. and um, so I wanted to get to know who in the hell I was. Yes. So that when I'm in a relationship again, yes. I'll know what I'm doing and know I'll be definitely wiser about who I allow into my life in terms of love. But it always gives me great inspiration for writing songs. You know, all my songs are, you know, somewhat autobiographical. Looking yeah. for a new love, all of them. Don't like, you want me? Like, Don't who, you want who, who, me? Who was that for? Don't You Want Me was my vulnerable song, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that feeling of, um, you know, you meet somebody and you kind of like them yeah. and they don't know, you know, you don't know if they're feeling mm -hmm. you or not. And so that one was kind of from vulnerability. But if you listen to most of my songs, they're always from a woman's view, from a point of strength. Uh, yeah. Looking for a new love is, you know, baby, I'm strong. I'm going to get over you. Did you and Madonna get along? Madonna, when I first came out, um, my manager was um, partners with uh, Ron Wisner and Freddie DeMann, who was her first manager, mm -hmm. and um, so I, I did meet her. She was a fan of Shalimar, mm -hmm. so uh, when I met her the first time, someone said, I've never seen her be nice to anybody wow. before. Um, but, you know, so then after that, I think there was a conflict of uh, me being there and and so my manager who was the baby of the bunch he went on his own to manage me because um, I guess the firm wasn't big enough for, for the two of you yeah. yeah we're both alpha females so gotcha cool. <laughs> gotcha gotcha have you ever been in an abusive relationship I have physically y yes yeah I have. it was were, did we know you at the time you were at the height of what uh, what yeah yeah, you did. I was in Shalimar. And, and <laughs> Jeffrey? But that'll be in the book, Wendy. Come he used on. to beat you down. <laughs> I didn't say that. Hello, wait, wait. I didn't say that, but perhaps. Oh. Um, were, you ever on nothing is, were you ever on drugs? No. Like, you know, strung out type, you know. Never. No. Boy, oh boy. Uh, I'm boring. No, but you know really, what? I'm not boring in, in because my life story has really been... Uh, uh, very, you know, really interesting. My dad was uh, a minister. Mm -hmm. He was a radio uh, personality in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, was he popular? He was very popular. Mm -hmm. You know, I was riding in limos and stuff like that when I was a kid. But mm -hmm. my dad uh, died of alcoholism. And so, what in was terms your dad's of radio name? He was John Watley, Bishop, John. Bishop Watley, and um, he was on, uh, at the time, WVON in Chicago. Mm. He had his own church. He ended up, he had a lot. He lost everything. Um, and alcoholism killed him. Yeah, so when it comes to, you know, any type of alcohol or drugs, you know, being a, a child who was raised in um, that type of environment, uh, I don't need to live it personally yeah. in that way. You saw it. Was, mom, saw was mom there? My mom was there, and uh, she's a, a substance woman? abuse survivor um, as well. And so with me, it's like what was people, her? What was her of choice? Everything. Yeah. Everything. Coke. 
everything. We coke, whip it, alcohol, gorilla, eat pills. Crack, everything. Wow. Everything. Wow. The world will save you this trip. <laughs> wow. Wow. Everything. And so... Wow. Uh, I have a lot of uh, tenacity. Oh, unbelievable. Well, how about the siblings? Are you an only one child? No, you know I'm not. I have a... But Midori, the porn star <laughs> sister. I'm just trying to attract you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. No. I, I Let's talk a, about that. Your sister. You got porn um, star looks. Why, did, why, uh, did you, uh, why did, didn't she sway you to do that? Is she uh, many years younger than you? She is. She's, she's many years younger. Well, 10 years younger than me. Oh, yeah. Uh, and at that so, point, you were already in Shalimar. You already had a, a situation going on with the music? What do you mean? At the point that she's turned into a porn star. No, no, no. The, as far as I know, I mean, at that point, she was still a kid. Yeah. Um, when our family discovered this was going on, it was, we were probably the last to know. And, I mean, the depth of what that meant to our family is another layer for um, the book. for the book I mean seriously <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny no. but it, it's like nothing um, was I mean no, I love her yes. you know but it was at when I found out, it was very traumatic for me being her older sister because I didn't know. But you already in, didn't know. You were already in show business. It seems though, out of everybody in the in family, to be able to kind of make the bridge between your conservative parents and your porn star sister would be you. Because although you might not be a porn star yourself, mm -hmm. it, people m mistake this business for uh, loose morals anyway. Mm -hmm. But you were shocked also. I was. Yeah, because, you know, though I'm in the entertainment business, I'm not... Uh, you know, who discovered it in your family? I'm not how like did, how running did, around, sleeping around. You're not a slut. I'm very virtuous. Absolutely not, not at all. So, and I'm not, I'm not saying that my sister is either, but <laughs> okay. um, people started asking me, yeah. you know, do you have a sister named Midori? I'm okay. like, no. How did your family discover it? <laughs> Just by people asking, and I'd say no because, as far as I knew, she was dancing. She was, Ooh. you know exotic dancing right. that's the most of what i knew right and so to discover anything like that uh wow it was wow. it was uh it was very difficult she, and we didn't speak for a while um, she's still that the midori that's the green alcohol drink that that's she named herself after the that's what i thought midori. it was well what is it that's <laughs> I what i'm know. thinking it is well, i don't know um we're gonna get ready to go into the break but i also want to ask you about um Oh, gosh, I lost my train. Damn, <laughs> um, are, are there any people that are in your camp today in 2005 that, that rode with you during um, during the, the height of Jody Watley? Yeah, most, most, so most of my uh, closest friends, which aren't many, uh, they've been with me through, you know, the journey. It's a ride. Yeah. You know? it, it's a ride. But, uh, you know, what's the note? I don't know. Today wants to bring. Hello. Check one. Check two. Who's today. Okay. Oh, you have a camera person with you. What are we taking for two? Oh. Somebody get my lipstick. Oh, for my own archives. Keep it here, yeah, everybody. Okay, cool. We've got hey, more everybody. with the legendary Jody Watley next on the Experience. Wendy, man. I just found out this morning that my supervisor is pregnant. Damn you, I told you not to do it. Can I tell my wife myself? Plan on a divorce. And um, as for your job, put that where? Back there. The Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> Classic Soul. Oh, my goodness. As Jack Tripper used to say on Three is Company, Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. We have got to talk about the newest Hollywood divorce. One of my friends in my head. In my head, I used to not like her, but the older both of us got, the closer we became. And now she's getting divorced. Oh, I'm there for you in my head. Ugh. Oh. Plus, we've got to talk about Eddie Murphy and Wentworth Miller in the same sentence. And I want to talk with you about Maymay Ali, friend to the show. Maymay Ali. Now, I want to let you know that WBLS is having our Christmas party with a purpose on <clears throat> December 17th at 
the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. You can get your tickets by calling 212-307-7171. I had no idea Sharissa was going to be there to perform. It's Cameo, Sharissa, Jaheem, Donnell Jones, and Vivian uh, Green. Brought to you by Razak Hair Care Products. Hey, Razak, and the New York City Department of Health, as well as Preferred Equity Solutions. And the purpose of this party is to raise money for the anti-domestic violence programs, Safe Horizon and Day One. Don't forget, the weekend is here in the Shadow Night Club's doors are flung open just for you, Rowan Sexy. The Shadow is in Manhattan. In just a moment, I'm going to the telephones. I've got to give away this hour's Dons and Divas passes. Um, you can give me a call at 866-GET-WENDY. I'm racing to the telephone. Um, you know, Harlem... If you don't want to um, call to win, you can always get in touch with Pop at Black Star Music. Black Star Music is selling Dons and Divas extravaganza tickets. The big party's on December 22nd. The telephone number in Harlem for Black Star Music is 212-234-6244. In Midtown Manhattan, my people at Demetrio Furs. Special shout out to Inga and, of course, Bill and Pete Demetrio right there on 30th Street. They are longtime sponsors. Um, of of the Dons and Divas extravaganza. They've sponsored the previous five, and now this is the sixth one. They're sponsoring this one as well. Um, and might I add, they are Manhattan's best furriers. As a matter of fact, cut out the middleman and just go right to them. They've got a beautiful showroom, but they also have Dons and Divas passes. So let me give you the telephone number for Demetrio Furs. 212-695-8475. Eight four six nine. If you're coming into the city this weekend, why don't you stop by, pick up the passes, take a look at a coat or something like that, okay? And you know what? I want to shout out to Gilliard Clothing, Dennis, Tiffany, and Jamik. You know, Gilliard Clothing, um, they are the new urban apparel line for the 05 into the 06, and um, they are the sponsors of the Dons and Diva VIP room. They are decorating it and tricking it out. They're giving us clothes bags for the VIP. They're extra treats, by the way, in the VIP. If you get VIP tickets, um, I don't know what I can say this, but we're giving away gift bags. Okay. Oh. Yeah, exactly. You know what kind of stuff is in the gift bags? Dollhouse shoes. Uh, little toys? All kinds of stuff. That's just a, uh, lip glosses. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, do you know the saying for Gilead Clothing to say, go hard, live well? Which is pretty much the, the saying for uh, life, isn't it? Go hard, live well. Uh, aspire to. And shout out to Martel XNL up there in the VIP of the Dons and Davis Extravaganza. Um, the thing is, is that I probably uh, need to get to the telephone, but let me just um, do one more quick reminder that um, on Saturday, tomorrow, Saturday, Oh, by the way, this hour is sponsored by the New York Post Scratch Game. The New York Post Scratch Game. Okay, on Saturday, December 3rd, that's tomorrow, don't forget, Jody Watley is in town, and she's going to be one of the many people, um, celebrities coming through the uh, Move Against AIDS Dance-a-thon at Manhattan Center, 311 West 34th Street. This is a 24-hour dance-a-thon um, put on by the Gay Men's Health Crisis. We love you all for doing this every year. Um, fabulous DJs all day into all day. 24 hours, okay? Um and top fundraisers for the WBLS team are going to win uh, Mark Echo Messenger gift bags and um, Klein Creative Communications created those bags filled with all kinds of stuff um, valued at more than $1,200. It's the move against AIDS, the gay men's health crisis is putting this on. And it's going to be tomorrow at Manhattan Center. And I am going to be there with some Wendy Williams Experience t-shirts and, well, a smile on my face. <laughs> Between 7 and 9 p.m. I'll see you over there. And how you doing? How you doing? All right. Now what we, we need to do is we need to go to the phone to get a winner for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Mine's are crazy. The, I say, hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Good. What's your name? It's Patrice. Hi, Patrice. What do you do for yourself? I'm a assistant buyer at Lomans. Oh, oh well, I love Lomans. Yeah, me too. They got everything in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, do you live by yourself? I live by myself. I have a 13-year-old. 
Uh huh. And who are you gonna bring to the party? I'm bringing my girlfriend. I wish I could bring the whole crew, but unfortunately, we only get two tickets. <laughs> no, I mean you could. What borough do you live? In the live? Bronx. You live in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, that's uptown in Harlem. You can tell your friends to go to Black Star Music, and they have tickets in that's in Harlem. Two one two two three four six two four four. Okay, I sure will. But you want to know what? Yesterday. Um, Actually, on the answering machine, the Dons and Divas official hotline, uh -huh. there was a man calling. He, he um, ordered up 25 tickets. He's giving them out to all of his friends. He's making a Christmas party for his cipher within, right. the, within the Dons and Divas VIP. I thought that was pretty hot. That's the first idea I had because we are all going through something, and it's like I just want to take them all out and just, you know, the hell with everybody. And, and you know what? Get drunk. Exactly. <laughs> and the drinks are going to be flowing all night long. Mm -hmm. And the hors d'oeuvres. And people are going to be looking beautiful. And don't forget, this is the black party. You, if you're coming to the party, you must be dressed in black. I'm sorry. The dress code is strictly enforced. Black. You know what? I had a question about that. Wendy. And grown and sexy. Not black Tims and black damn But what jeans. about the sesame? What if I come with like a red mink one and like some red stilettos? <laughs> yeah. Fine. I mean, I, you're not going to be wearing your mink all night. No. Right? But I just didn't want to get turned around because I had red shoes. Oh on no, you could, no, I just wanted to know about the accessories. Your, your accessories could be, your accessories could be whatever you want them to be. Right. Just as long as you're private, everything is covered with <laughs> black. You know the vital signs. Right. And, well, the vital signs should be covered with you know being black. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. So, um, Patrice, mm -hmm. I'll see you on December twenty second. We're gonna put you on hold and take all your information behind the scenes. Thank okay. Thank you so much, Wendy. I uh, love you. All right. Bye bye. Bye. The other day when I was, um, I just happened to stop by Demetrio for the working on a little something, um, you know, to cover my shoulders, and um, they were telling me that a, a girl came in and ordered up a black mink bikini for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Oh. So, yeah, I thought that was hot. I was like, wow. But how little Kimish. Yay. You know? Yeah. All right, so let's open the door. A longtime friend, Colin Powell, is in. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. You know, here's the interesting thing about you. So. You look as youthful today as you did on The Real World, the best season, season one. Heather B. I take care of myself. John Meese. What's up, y'all? The very, very good? confrontational I, Kevin Powell. That's old school Kevin Powell. It is. New no. school. You smoothed out? Smooth? No, no, no. What are you, in love? You're still, you're still leading the good fight, aren't oh, you, brother? You know that. Probably going to be running for office next year, too. I hope I get your support. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. I, you know, all right. So, uh, well, I mean, I could, I could see where you were going based on your personality and um, your demeanor on the real world. Then mm -hmm. you got off and, you know, you, you, you got down with a lot of great causes. As a matter of fact, we're about to talk with one of, right. about one of the causes that you're down with. What office are you considering running for? Are you serious about this? I'm very serious. That's what I You know, I'm from Jersey. I went to Rutgers. I studied politics, political science. So it's been in my blood for a long time. Let's talk about it. Oh, I... Uh, where, where do you live in <laughs> Jersey? Know. I live in Brooklyn. Been in Brooklyn for 15 years. I'm from Jersey City, though. You gonna, you gonna try to do something out there in Brooklyn? Definitely. No, we gonna we about to uh, take Brooklyn another direction. I don't want to say the office I'm interested in, but people know. You know what I'm saying? Because it's time. You know, especially us who grew up in the hip hop era. You know, my man Ras Barak is now deputy mayor of Newark, New Jersey. You got Kwame Kilpatrick in Detroit. It's time for us to step up and not just be on the sidelines. You know, and it's very serious, especially those of us who grew up in this era. We got the ears of a lot of younger heads, that's as right. you do here. That's right, you know that's right, I mean? that's right. And just imagine all the people who listen to you, if you say you should vote, they're going to vote. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? If you should do something, they'll do it. They'll do it. Well, let's just clear the air right now. Yeah. What, what's going to pop up when the white people start, you know, trying to tear you down? Do you white take care of all your kids? kids? I don't have any children. All right, I'm there good. We go. Never got go. no one in for pregnant. I'm good. I'm good. And I'm honest. You are, know are, I mean? are you finally clean and sober? <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? They're clean and sober. When I, okay, go to, cool. I go to you know church, Manuel Baptist Church in Brooklyn. But I'm still a hip hop head. Are you still, still messing with those little boys? You bugging out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just trying to clear the air. Ain't nothing like that, Wendy. But okay, I feel okay, you gotta ask okay. those questions, right? Yes. Yeah. You, you know, you know they try kinda, to they try to dig. You gotta ask those R. Kelly questions. Yes. <laughs> Listen, um, did you finish paying off the bribe for um, for your graduation <laughs> diploma? Nah, because you know what? I never finished Rutgers University. And the thing is, be I'm honest. mad honest about everything. I'll be honest. Because you know what? Young heads today, you know, you got to be transparent, you yes. know, which is why this this, this show is, is real, always interesting to me. Everywhere I go, my barbershop's probably listening to it right yeah. now. Skills Barbershop, Brooklyn, New York. Hey, and, Skills. You know what I'm saying? And, um... 
You gotta be transparent. And to me, hip hop is about keeping it real, and it's just the next logical step for us. We're talking about all the stuff we've yeah. done. You've made your career. Yeah. I've made my career. Many of us have done our thing, yeah. but like, you know, I want to see some power happen in this new century, especially in light of what went down with Katrina and how a lot of people have been displaced. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. We, so you're doing something tonight, so, uh, yeah, Monday, Monday night. Monday Talk night. about it. It's Talk about bar at uh, uh, it's my fifth annual holiday party. So I do it every year in the past. I think I heard you mention Safe Horizons up in here at some point. I yeah. I heard that. We were benefiting Safe Horizons Street Work Project. The domestic uh, a violence piece. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've been working with uh, their homeless youth program for the last four years, but because Katrina happened, mm -hmm. we decided to dedicate this whole thing on Monday uh, to Katrina survivors. We identified a site down in uh, Louisiana, Lafayette, Louisiana, yeah. so we're going to send two or three more tractor trailer trucks down there. But yeah. also, because we got about 5,000 evacuees here in the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area, yeah. including seven hotels here, yeah. we're going to um, make sure we um, um, support folks here too, especially in the holiday season. Yeah. You know so we were out there yesterday at the Planet of Hollywood. You just can't do enough. Nah, you got, and you know, we, we got to. We got to. And so that's Monday, uh, December 5th at Crowbar. It's free as long as you bring something to donate. We're talking about clothing. You know, all different sizes of folks. What time do the doors open? 7 p.m. Okay. I want you to come be a VIP. You know what I'm like, saying? Well, I, I can't because on Monday I'm actually doing something to benefit AIDS. I have a big okay. gala that I'm hosting over at the Lighthouse on Chelsea Pier. Oh, that's peace. Yeah, Who you know what? I'm, I'm a co chair person. Um, uh, like 11 o'clock? We're going to at least 1 o'clock. But really, I'm going to be in black tie. You, this is a VIP thing. We actually said, you know, come, oh, okay. come fly. You know what oh. I'm saying? They'll know you, come to the door, yeah. and let you right in, you know what I mean? Yeah. It'll be an honor to have you there, because this is important. We have a Very lot of important. industry heads, you know. Our honorary chairpersons are, are, are people like my man Spike Lee, who's working on the Katrina documentary. You know, yeah. I mean, he was very moved by it. You know, um, a lot of people coming through, a lot of industry heads. You know what I'm saying? Very um, nice. And I'm just excited. And so it's free as long as you bring something. What's your website? Well, the words at is you can get information at davyd.com. That's my homeboy, D A V E Y D.com. Davyd.com. Okay. Go there, get mad information about the event on, Friday, on Monday. Okay, and we're going to move on with the break. Um, we got a lot to cover today on the show. Kevin, thank you so much no, for coming you. in. Appreciate it. Hey, good luck, uh, Mayor, Councilman. Borough president. We're going to talk about Brooklyn 2006. Good luck, good luck, Mr. President. Ah, All right. Sure. All right. There he goes. Dun, dun, da, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Yo, I dig that, though. I, I've always liked him. You know? We are at war! Let's take a break. We'll be back with uh, more Jody Watley on the Wendy Williams Experience at 107.5 WDLS. Wendy Williams rocking your station, dropping hits across the whole nation. Wendy Williams rocking your afternoon. Make sure you all keep it here. Coming up next hour, I have got to talk to you about the latest Hollywood divorce. I've got to tell you what's all a doing with MOP. Um, and a final component to the uh, Master Cleanse diet that we were talking about earlier. Plus, I want to talk with you about Eddie Murphy and Wentworth Miller. And I'm going to use them in the same sentence. How you doing? <laughs> Is that Did jewelry real? Yeah. It's gorgeous. Thank you, Jody. You guys should see all this bling she has on. You know what? You weren't part of the bling era. It was probably very, very... Well, you know, back then, um, you were able to put yourself together with... It wasn't about, um, like today, rims and, right. and, you know, designer labels and diamonds. Diamonds, yeah. It was about real creativity and not necessarily a stylist. And like you I had to work for it, too. It's like now everything is really accessible. It's free, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, when I first started out as a solo artist, I mean, if, if I had an idea for something, either I had to have it made yeah. or really had to hunt for it. But it's great now because, you know, it's like at your fingertips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who, who do you love today? Uh, some of these R and B girls, like, and let's talk about it. I, I like Beyonce. Mm -hmm. She's very me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, and actually, I wrote a song that Destiny's Child recorded on their Writings on the Wall CD, which I love them for because the royalty checks were very wonderful. Oh. So thank you, Destiny's Child. It's yeah. a song called Sweet Sixteen. Uh -huh. And uh, so I like Beyonce. She's glamorous. Uh, she seems to be humble. Yeah. Uh, she well. reminds me of me. I, yeah. She of everybody, yeah. and everybody tries to be like her. Yes. Um, just like, like everybody you know, tries to be like yeah. her. Yeah. So uh, she stands out. Alicia Keys is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, that's it. What, no. who, who, who don't you appreciate? 
What I don't appreciate is I don't understand the fascination with people like Lindsay Lohan and Nicole Richie mm -hmm. and Paris Hilton. Yeah. I mean, it's a cheap, you know, uh, it's a cheap time that we're living yeah, in now. I don't really get that, but but uh, you know what? Also, these days people aren't really made for the longevity. You know, Beyonce right. will go on to be yeah. a legend, but but people aren't becoming legends like Donna Summer or Jodie right, Watley right. and stuff. There's a fly, very flash in the pan. You were really a part of something special, Jody. I think so. At, Thank you. At your most fabulous <laughs> financial time um were you a wealthy financial woman or were you wealthy did you have millions of dollars i've done well i wouldn't say millions upon millions the interesting thing is uh there's a disparity and i think it still exists with uh, black artists and white yes. artists and about it. when i was signed to mca and the year I won the Grammy Award, for instance, it was like the best and the worst. Okay. And for instance, Tiffany at the time was very popular. I think you're alone. I think you're alone now. I was sitting in coach. She was sitting in first class. What? The year I won the Grammy. So, you know, the, there was this wow. guy, Charlie Sexton, who they signed him. He never had one hit record, but yeah. they gave him a gazillion dollars. And... So when you say, you know, wealthy, I've done well, but in terms of... I'm talking about straight up money. You know, I wouldn't consider it like that, no. Because when I think, you know, Jody, did straight you have, out did money... You have, did then, you ever have, like, white management and representation? And, and, I've and, had both. Uh -huh. I've had both. And, and the white men weren't able to fight for you and get you, you know, what you... Could, well, I, I think, like I said, as famous. the great thing is yeah. because I'm a writer and producer as well. Right. Um... The, the 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 great thing is that you know the royalty checks are always right. there and as a veteran artist i can always tour in fact i was talking to a friend of mine who works with tony braxton yeah and um she was saying that she was frustrated about the record company and, yeah. and what they were doing and i said tell her to you know She's Toni Braxton. Go book her own dates and she'll become a get legend to so where she and, can. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. just people, you know, will always want to to see you. It's yes. not so much with a career; it's different than a hit record sort of thing. Now, where do you call home now? It's Jody Watley, everybody. Hi. Respect this woman. <laughs> I live in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. and yeah. Do you live a condo or? Do you, I always like to find out how you know the celebrities you know are living. I live in a very comfortable Spanish. Um, bungalow. It's a it's a nice house. It's very. How many years have you lived there? It's very luxe, but very okay. petite. Okay. <laughs> it's for you, and I would imagine your 13 year old lives there now. Does yes. your 22 year old still live with you? She is home right now. She's in. She's been here the past three years in college. Ah, in New York. And uh, you know, which again is is. Uh, I did save. I invested. Do you drive around in a big body, you know, flashy Beverly Hills car? Tell us. I drive a Benz. Okay. It, how, so, what year? Know, I'm not on the bus, y'all. What you year? Know? We love to hear. We love see. We love to hear it's how the new. legends are. Okay. I have my house. And, yeah. Um, you know, putting my daughter through college. Yeah. And she I, got a partial scholarship because she's really smart mm -hmm. and beautiful. Mm -hmm. But have you ever thought of acting? Well, I know you did Rizzo in Greece. You know what? When I did Greece, I thought I wanted to act, and then. My agent was like, you know, you should take some classes and everything. And rather than take acting classes, I said I want to take business classes because ultimately I want to be an entrepreneur. Like the records that I put out now, I, I own them. Yes. I license them. Is there a best so of Jody Watley um, CD? I'm working on a project called The Makeover. And it has to do with... Re rediscovering some of my classics but in a new way yeah. I'm covering some songs that uh, have been uh, influential to me Good. and I also wrote some new songs too are you are and, you have uh, celebrity friends and then friends? I'm going under the knife and so I'll do a before and after picture are you really no <laughs> would you ever consider plastic surgery you look pretty sure. natural to me. Those are natural sure. breasts. You have a push-up bra. Sure, yeah, I do. And you, you are a beautiful woman. Thank I, you. You know, uh, still. Thank you. Thank you. I, my coworker here in New York, Ann Tripp, you and she are already friends in my head. And I told the guys behind the scenes, <laughs> and they said we agree. You know, she's she's probably about your age and very very sassy, uh -huh. and and just just I could see both of you doing the town together, slaying twenty-two year olds. 
Oh. That's what I can say. What's the number? That's what I can say. <laughs> Sounds good to me. So, so uh, do you enjoy the company of young men when you do enjoy the company, or do you prefer somebody who's a little more seasoned? Young men. If it's 20. a person that's seasoned, he has to have a young attitude because, you know, right. there's nothing wrong. As it, I don't like oldness. Yes. I think you can, you know, grow older and appreciate it, yes. but still be vibrant, um, excited, enthusiastic, uh, still ready for discovery. And, you know, not to diss older men, but some are kind of, you know, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. so I'm single and I would, I would be open. It'd probably be uh, a younger person. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. You know can can we like, play, um, fill in the link, turn that music off. Come on, because I'm feeling this. Turn that off. Turn that <laughs> off. All right, so get ready. Are you going to pick it up? My love was true, but you threw it all away. Do it, Jody. Do it. But now you like the rest. Ooh. Unworthy of my best. <clears throat> Hasta la vista, baby. baby. <laughs> Legendary Jody Watley. Is there anything that else that I need to find out from you before we read your book? <laughs> Please keep I'm working on that book. I'm saving it for that. And, yeah, and really, you know, it, it, I just want to say that it's, it's really all about believing in yourself no matter what and uh, not losing sight of who you are because especially in this business, there's always people that will make you doubt yourself to, to rob you of the essence of you. Who were your and, close celebrity uh, girlfriends um, then? None. Okay. Oh, oh. Can we read more about <laughs> Jermaine that? Jermaine Stewart. <laughs> and the word is out that Jermaine Stewart and Magic Johnson yeah. were close. The book. <laughs> Honey, how you doing? And all right. <laughs> no. Do you it'll know be, what I'm talking about, Jody? It'll, it'll, yeah, are you going to be changing names or are we going to be talking in this book? We'll be talking in the book. Spill There's the nothing tea. worse than, I think, a person writing a book without really giving it up. And mm. giving it up in a way that doesn't have to be negative, but no. everything that ties into the journey of life and what you learn. It's your journey. It's my journey, so, you know, I have to Jody tell Watley And it'll experience. also make a great musical one day, too. I bet it will. <laughs> As long as you spill the tea the way it needs to be spilled, no, layers. So, so Jermaine Stewart and you were uh, very, very close. He was my best friend for quite some time. And uh, he passed away years ago. Mm. He passed of HIV. And at, at the time mm. of his uh, passing, we weren't friends anymore. What happened? Uh, you know, my song, I wrote a song, uh, Friends, uh, and the first line is... Oh, um, nice. How many see, of us? No, have funny. you ever been stabbed in the back by someone you thought was really cool. That's you and J uh, Jermaine? No, no. I wrote it. It was influenced and inspired by him and yes. people who had betrayed me. Yeah, they go My song is, is real. And, and by the way, if Rakim is in New York and he's listening, I love you. Uh, that song was That's uh, right. A That's classic. right, Rakim. And, uh, one of the best lyricists, just uh, man. Imagine, way, imagine if he showed to, up tomorrow to night at him. the. Uh, I know. At, at we the, need to get him. Yeah. So, but Jermaine and and Magic, they were um, good friends as well. Why do you ask? <laughs> oh, man. Don't start nothing. Won't be nothing. <laughs> we we want to read your book. It will be, you know, it will be. Enlightening. The many layers of Jody Watley. Because when people see me, they think, you know, glam, diva, fairy tale, you know, oh, she danced on Soul Train and then she was in Shallow. Had lots of sex, did like, a lot of know. drugs, and, and things happened. She was too. I did. Did you? Everybody else was back then. You were a young girl. Like, you, and you beautiful. I missed out on that. I missed out on the sex. <laughs> well, you are uh, still as beautiful as ever and a wonderful woman. Jody. I thank, thank you. you so much. Thank Listen, you. when this book it. comes out and whatever music, I'm please. I'm back up here. Thank you. Thank you. That's, all, that's right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'd like to see my guests still right. walk away. Wait, we'll do a hug first. Wait, hold on. Keep the mics going. Jody. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now grab your coat. No, I like to see the walk away. I like to see my guests walk away. Look at Jody with the freaky toenail polish. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, black toenail polish, that means that somewhere in there you're not wearing underwear. No. Oh, 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 she's not oh, fair. Oh, I know. Look at Jody with her low rise jeans on. Mm -hmm. She's 
Huh? She is. Huh? Yes. Bye bye, Jody. How wonderful does she look? Because that Magic Johnson and Jermaine Stewart is legendary. And we'll be back. Happiness and cheer. Fun for all the children home. Their favorite time of year. Snowflakes in looking for a type of job in which I can teach females how to give good professors. I spend my time in Jersey. Like, I don't drive around and see what the hell is really good. I'm sorry. A little behind the scenes runoff there. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of it. It is a new year and a new day. Shout out to MOP, the entire MOP faction. Brownsville represent. MOP is G-Unit now. And right now, as we do this show, MOP is up at 50 Studio in Connecticut working on their MOP CD debut. And might I add, a congratulations to Little Fame, who is in the process of losing weight. You know, he's a little chubby. He's already lost like 10, 15 pounds. And remember his teeth? Remember Little Fame's teeth? Well, I have to tell you something. 50 and Fame are getting all that correct. MOP now. MOP now. MOP now. G-Unit now. And guess what? They'll be at the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Fame will be showing off that new waistline, them new teeth. Dance will be looking handsome as ever. Fox, how you doing, Fox? Fox will be up in there. She's a lady. And of course, shout out to you, Lace. Hey, Lace, thank you so much for calling, too. Listen, Lace has done the, um, the, um, what's the diet called that we're all going to do? Master the Master Cleanse Diet. Lace from um, MOP. He's, he's, you know, the man behind and, and you know, what, what all is going on. He does the business at hand. So, Lays heard me talking about the Master Cleanse Diet during Advice Hour, and he immediately rang up and said, look, don't forget to tell people that a major aspect of the Master Cleanse Diet is that you've got to take your laxative tea twice a day and the sea salt, or the, excuse me, the, the Epsom salt or the salt bath. Without taking these two things, he says, you get very sick on the Master Cleanse. So what I say to you is there's a bunch of information available on the web regarding the Master Cleanse diet. I gave you one of the sites, and I'll give it to you again, you know. Cause I, and also, you can pick up a book and then get the recipe, and we'll all start Master Cleansing on Monday. Lays said that he's lost weight on Master Cleanse. And people who go on it, you don't go on it for like a long period of time, you know, 10, 20 days, and then you're off. And you do it like once, twice a year, and you, you, know, you get your weight back in, in control. But it's a miracle. Here's the website again. Uh, the raw food site.com slash master cleanse dot H L M. Thank you again, ladies. And a special shout out again to Billy Dance and Little Fame and Fox. The G Unit faction is embracing the MOP faction, and together they're going to be doing it for themselves. I love that. I love that. And they're going to be at um, the Johnson Divas Extravaganza. Mm -mm. I know on the Wendy Williams Experience website, today's people poll question is, um, do your children believe in Santa Claus? That's the way I would have delivered it if I actually was the one that put it on the website. Instead, you're going to go to my It Is What It Is website and you're going to see, does your children believe in Santa Claus with the E on the end of Claus? Does your children, the Ebonics, believe in Santa Claus with the E on the end of Claus? And I am getting faxes left and right. Here's one. Hey, Wendy, just a little FYI. Your question of the day should read, do your children believe? in Santa Claus, not does. Cut with the Ebonics. Love ya. <laughs> does anybody know who Nikki, uh, Nikki Harris is? Nikki Harris? Nikki Harris? Nikki Harris? Nikki ha All right, a dancer. Does anybody know who Nikki Harris danced for? Oh, here comes a gay man in the room now. Come on. Ew. He would know. <laughs> Do you, Steve Lindsay, on hair and makeup know who Nikki Harris is? If I say a dancer for who? Madonna. You're not into Madonna? Why? Because what? You're not into Madonna. Be into Madonna. <laughs> because then you know Nikki Harris is the black girl. Do you have but my hair you in that? Yes, but what are you insinuating about me 
Your name is Madonna? <laughs> Never mind. They, <laughs> do you have my hair in your bag? Yeah. Okay, good. It's your hair bag. Yeah, thank you. Yep, my Guy LaRose hair bag. <laughs> Listen, this is what I'm telling you about Nikki Harris. That's the black girl who backed up Madonna. She's a singer, right? No, she's a... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you know who Jodie Watley is? Yes. Of course, Al. She's going to be tomorrow night at the, um, at the dance the we're going to. Oh. She's performing. She just left here. She left here just now. Did you just see her in the lobby? No, I did not. And you missed Cheryl Ralph yesterday? And I worked with Cheryl. And you missed Diana Ross the day before. Don't you go there. Yeah, say, say. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to... You'd, you'd get a spanking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so look, so you can unfurl the hair. We're amongst friends. Oh, okay. Nikki Harris, everybody, is the black girl who was her side... You know, there's a black girl and a white girl who danced with Madonna. Everybody else was incidental. The black girl and white girl were her road dogs. Well, I didn't realize Nikki was fired from Dancing for Madonna. Are you ready to hear why? Well... First of all, she's been taking a break touring with Rufus, Peaches and Herb, Troop, and Shy, and other old schoolers, which I'm a little surprised at that. <laughs> Button was that. Here's what she says, though, um, when talking about Madonna. Here's the quote. We were planning the reinvention tour in the summer of 2004. And in one section of the show, Madonna planned to have a burning cross, and the dancers, including myself, would dress as Klansmen on stage. And I told her nicely that as an African-American, I didn't appreciate it, and I wouldn't be part of that number. And she argued it at, that it's an art, and because we were tight at the time, I told her, boo! Nikki, Nikki says that Madonna argued with me, and we shut down rehearsal. I was so mad that I told her how she is always exploiting black folks, biting our style, our choreography, and videos. But when it comes down to being black, she would quickly run to the white side of town. Madonna didn't like it, and she fired me. She replaced me with Saida Garrett. You know who Saida Garrett is? Yes. Another black girl from Michael Jackson who danced. Also, she, right, exactly. She replaced me with Saida Garrett, and Saida went on to wear the KKK um, outfit, which really disappointed me because Saida didn't care about how we were being portrayed. And then Nikki says, hey, call it a bad, bad career move if you want to, but it wasn't like I was famous and rolling in money because of Madonna. I had many hustles going on, and I still go, mm. Good for her. I had no idea. I was I was astonished when I saw. The, hey, Biggie's uh, new CD, uh, Notorious B.I.G. Duets, the final chapter, comes out on December twentieth. People are looking forward to it. I know I am. And I'll tell you this: he's got another uh, thing coming out too, the Big Mobile uh, Month, which is. A new CD. It's actually Biggie's biggest catalog. His hits transformed into 60 ringtones, tailor-made for the wireless world. There's only one of those ringtones that I would want. Ring, ring. Who the hell is this? Page of Big Pop Boys, right? Yeah. Now, don't forget, you can get through those 60 ringtones. This month, beginning this month, he's got a um, venture, or his camp has a venture through um, Ringtone. Um, hmm. That's good. That's good. And the um, duet CJ. That's hot. That's hot. <laughs> Muhammad Ali's daughter is in a show on Lifetime called Earth Angels. Have you ever seen that? Well, it's, it's on Lifetime, supposedly. Oh, you know what? It's a special. It hasn't come on yet. December 6th. She's going to play the old role of an angel. And something going on on Lifetime. And I had no idea. I'm a little confused. I had no idea Mamie Ali was an actress. She's a friend to the show. She's been here before. Do we have that Mei Mai Ali moment? Can you pull up the Mei Mai Ali moment? Help him. I don't know if I have that. Why? Because that might have been before I started. No, we've, we've played it. I mean, that's you've been here since I was here? Goose, you, you've seen it in the studio? No. No, she's been here since I was here? No, no, I haven't. 
नॉइज नॉइज इस ना है We really got to get it together, man. Yeah. We have got to get it together. And shout out to everybody in Memphis. I know that this is only our fifth day with you people. Power 99, nonstop hip hop. And this program right here, and I appreciate you good people listening to us this afternoon. They got us on in the afternoon, man. We're on all different times, every place. <laughs> Some places we're on at the crack of dawn, the dead of night. <laughs> <laughs> Middle. I mean, it is what it is. But we are on in we do we're afternoon drive, at Tower 99, nonstop hip hop, in um in Memphis. And um, I apologize. It is what it is. Uh, this show. Hopefully, you'll grow to at least tolerate us. So we are we ready to talk about um Eddie Murphy and Wentworth Miller? Okay. First of all. My wag friend, Jeffrey Wells, he lives out in L.A., and he just, like, rolls up on celebrities, and he gets them to say the best stuff. He's the one who, um, oh, gosh, I, I, I recited many Wentworth, or, excuse me, Jeffrey Wells' mama, but let's talk about this, okay? So, he rolled up on Eddie Murphy at Crustacean, having dinner with the director of Dreamgirls, Bill Condon. I love Jeffrey. You've got to love him. So Jeffrey tells us that Eddie wouldn't discuss his divorce, but here's what he did say to Jeffrey. It won't be messy. He also says that he's looking forward to Dream Girls, which begins production next month in New Jersey and New York. And this is his quote, any black project with a lot of money behind it is a step in the right direction. I just wish that this was the norm and not the exception. So Jeffrey goes on to ask him about the rumors surrounding he and Johnny Gill. <clears throat> and Jeffrey says that Eddie was quick to change the subject <laughs> to his favorite show, Prison Break. Oh, something about Wentworth Miller, huh? So then they went on and talked about Wentworth Miller. And um, Jeffrey told Eddie that Wentworth is black. And Eddie's reaction was say what and then Eddie went on to talk and say um here's the quote when Derek Jeter and Jason Kidd with Derek Jeter and Jason Kidd I don't have to strain to see their blackness with Mariah Carey and Jennifer Beals I don't have to strain to see their blackness but with Wentworth Miller I can't see it he looks straight up white to me hmm. does Wentworth Miller look black to you Oh, he's that handsome. I don't even watch Prison Break, and I know who that is. I'll tell you what, he, since he buzzed off, since he doesn't have, have any hair, you know, um, I just know that he looks gorgeous. Something about that buzz cut for white boys that, that gives them a black swagger, because I'll tell you what, Joey Lawrence looks very Negroidian on half and half, and hot, I, whoa, <laughs> with the buzzed off hair, right? <clears throat> anyway. Oh, are you ready for the divorce? Are you ready? Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, the marriage of Haitian-American, beautiful and talented Garcelle Bouvier is over. The divorce proceedings have started between she and her husband of four years, who happens to be a sports agent. His name is Mike Nyland. They were married in Malibu back in May of 2001. They have no children together. Irreconcilable differences. Garcelle turned 39 on Saturday. She's got a 13-year-old son named Oliver from her first husband, a TV producer named George Saunders. I got to tell you, it's very... Another one bites the dust. Keep it where you got it. It's windy, man. I drove yesterday to get your... That book is fire! <laughs> Yes, honey, you did it again, honey, you did it again. The Wendy Williams Experience. The stage is set for this year's WBLS party with a purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. Just added Cameo. Cameo Live. Larry Blackman and Cameo. Along with Chai, Chai, Chai. Vivian Green. Green. Any other 
Dress your best and follow the red carpet into a first-class <laughs> night of fun in the Broadway ballroom of the Marriott Marquis Midtown, Saturday night, December 17th. Enjoy a full holiday buffet while DJ Chuck chill out. Drop it like it's hot. With my compadres, WBLS Air Personality. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey. Jackie Reed. Nephew Tommy. And Trip. Mark Jordan. Hi, it's me, Wendy Williams. David Levy rocking you. This is Champagne. This is Hal Jackson. Along with special invited VIPs, you'll never know who might be in the house. Tickets available now at all Ticketmaster locations. Proceeds to benefit Safe Horizons and Day One. Sponsored by the New York City Department of Health and Preferred Equity Solutions. Keeping your family in your home and keeping your home in your family. It's a party with a purpose. From 107.5 WBLS. sitting here with Steve Lindsay on hair and makeup and we're discussing Don's and Diva's hair and he's telling me um, spiral curls what did you say spiral just curls long, just long, long spiral long. curls are you going to be on advice hour on, on Monday I'm expecting to be yes and you're bringing Jesse Volt from, from the tranny website mm -hmm. So he, so he, he wants to talk a bit about his thing, but I, you know what? I wanted to, I wanted you to come during advice hour on Monday because I think Steve, you are. I mean, you know, you're my personal jewel, but I, you know, I discovered you at my hair salon, um, salonsantacruz.com. I mean, excuse me, Salon Santa Cruz um, on Madison Avenue. Um, um, and and when I started to see that, you know, I needed somebody on call for like hair and makeup and stuff, you were a natural choice. And I love the things that you've taught me about hair, natural hair, fake hair. How, Steve's the one who taught me, throw some bleach on the pile of hair. If it, if it doesn't turn, what's the rule? If it doesn't turn, then it's, then it's plastic? Um, throw bleach on the hair. Well, if, 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 it, uh, if it... If it turns a color, that means it's real. You know, that's a whole big, that's a whole big process. You can't just throw bleach on... on no, I'm talking about Clorox. <laughs> I didn't tell you, you didn't that. Tell me I didn't tell me that. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, you taught me all kinds of tricks, okay? And I lied to you not. The point is, is that on Monday I want you to come and be on Advice Hour. I want to talk. I want you to talk about fusion, mm -hmm. weaves, yes, yes. bonding, relaxing, relaxing. What's good for black hair? What's good for black hair? What's good for white hair? I see this. The customers mm -hmm. at Salon Santa Cruz, the salon, they are there are some of everything, and you do some mm -hmm. of everybody's hair. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to talk about. The, the false front wigs. A lot of girls are so confused as to why Tyra Banks' hair on her show looks like it's growing from her scalp in the mm. front. You know, they don't and really orange. understand. Yeah, I don't like the orange hair. Well, you know what? She can wear it. <laughs> she can wear almost anything. Right, right. But, you know, with, with African-American hair, you cannot have orange hair for a long period of time. You can have it once. But once you try to maintain that, that takes bleaching out, and that, that can really ruin your hair. Mm -hmm. So, you know. So save the rest of that. We're going to talk on Monday yeah. during Advice Hour. It's going to be all about um, hair. And um, we'll talk about some celebrities and their hair, you know, weave, not weave, and, you know, how it's nice to finish it off at the bottom sometimes. And, and I mean, you tell me so many different things. Okay. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Steve Lindsay, everybody, on hair and makeup. Thank Hi. you. <laughs> this hour of the Wendy Williams experience is brought to you by VH1. Production starts back up in 406. Uh, Steve, we're over there on hair and makeup. Wendy Williams is on fire, warmer than ever. Or is that hotter than ever? Oh, damn you, VH1. Damn Crickets. you. I have some Dons and Divas passes to give away. I have two passes to give away this hour. So I am going to be going. I encourage you to call now, 866-GET-WENDY, and give me just a moment to um, dispense the rest of this WBLS information. 866-GET-WENDY. Call now. Um, and I'm going to go to the phone and get some winners for the Dons and Divas. Like, Steve Lindsay on hair and makeup that night. Ow. And dress. And gown. Yes, and gown. As a matter of fact, I put my gown oh. right here. I need a couple of alterations. Wait, hold on. We'll go in the office and um, 
You'll turn your back. Yes, and always, then you'll, always. You'll you'll do a little bit of pinning. Give the lady some respect. And I just, <laughs> I mean, he's 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 not going to make you a gown. He doesn't. You don't do it for everybody. No, I don't. It's a lot of work, and you know, I work in the shop in the daytime, and at night I work for you. <laughs> you know, I love that. You know what? <laughs> Wearing Steve Lindsay to me is better than wearing a Roberto Cavalli because it's it's for me. It's for you. One of a kind. Yeah. Taylor made. Yeah. I like it. And I like you wearing it. <laughs> I, and I like wearing them. And the hair, and, you know, whatnot. All right, look, um, what did I, I want to convey a message to you. And it had something to do with, oh, don't forget, tomorrow morning, check out the best of the Steve Harvey Morning Show from 6 to 8, and the best of the Wendy Williams experience from 8 to 10. And I'll tell you what the best of means, because this is only the second weekend we're doing this. I missed last weekend. I'm waking up this weekend. Um, the best of the week. Like, not best of shows from way in the past. Right, Hollywood? And you, you put my best up to... What? <laughs> what? Wait, <laughs> Hollywood. Long story. The <laughs> Wait, there's some best of shows from way back then? Just this one time, I had a little technical problem. <laughs> Whoa! Did something break? Again. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> well, what's Steve Harvey's best of? Is he his best of the week? Oh. All right, well, look, it is what it is, just be forewarned, but it's the best of both. Hey, Jadakiss, I just tried to call you on your cell phone, by the way, to invite you to my Dons and Divas extravaganza. I was all ready. I had your telephone number or whatnot, and then I dialed it. These, these rappers and people, they disconnect their phones all the time. I've had the same cell phone number for like five years, and I refuse to change it, you know. I was going to tell him that I really like the, you know, new song, I'm gonna bring it back. And with Jay Mills, and I was going to tell him that, you know, of course he heard Luch was up here a few weeks ago, and he said he'd be at Don's and Deep, and he's bringing Styles and Jadakiss and D-Block. But, you know, I just wanted to call Jadakiss personally and tell him, you know, I'll see you at the Don's and Divas extravaganza, because the block is hot. Brooklyn is on fire with these tickets. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh! December 22nd, it's the black party. If you're not wearing black, I'm sorry. And not only that, but it's grown and sexy. So, you know, that doesn't mean black street clothes. You know, throw it on. <laughs> Pimp your game. Dawn it out. Diva it out. It's a deluxe party. It's for the grown and sexy. And you know what? There's so much open barbage going on throughout the entire party that I'm encouraging you personally to either have a driver have a non-drinking person in your party, or get yourself a room. How are you going to drink for eight hours straight <laughs> and expect to drive home? Steve, no, really. That doesn't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how, are we, how are you going to, you, you know, you're going to be laid out. No. <laughs> laid out. I mean, if you're really donning it and you're really deviating it out, then just spend the extra buck to be sure that you are uh, alive to see the next day. Come on, let's get uh, let's get it on. Mary J. Blige is going to be up in there, and I'll have the list of um, celebrity RSVPs in a moment. Actually, the um, official invites just went out to the celebrities, but I know Keisha Cole called um, the day after the the um, Bible Awards. We talked on the telephone. She was like, "I'll be in there." Did you hear that Keisha Cole and Eve had a fight? Well, not a fight, but a verbal argument. They were out with some white girls, like out in L.A., and you know, Eve was like, you know. Just, you know, you don't need to be so angry and hood, basically, in front of the white girls, you know. Um, you know, get over it, you know. you're. In. But you know what, though? I've been hearing for a long time that Eve is really part of that Hollywood set like that. Like, really just, like, kind of turned out by it, you know. <sighs> okay, so. I'm getting ready to uh, hit the phones. I just wanted to give you the website. You can go to the Wendy Williams Experience .com to find out more information about Dons and Divas. You can purchase ticker, tickets at a number of places, including Hillside Auto Spa in Queens, 718-523-2309. You can call our Dons and Divas ticket hotline, which rings right there in the pink room at 212 
347-5199. Nobody's going to answer it directly. You leave your message and, and somebody will get back to you within a 24-hour period. People are purchasing um, tickets by the bulk to give them away as Christmas gifts. I love that idea. And people are purchasing tickets from out of town. I, I mean, I'm getting, you know, I'm calling from the 804. I'm calling from a, a couple of 213s, displaced New Yorkers out in L.A. that'll be back home for the holidays and are coming. A lot of ATL calls, a lot of Philly calls and Delaware calls. A couple of people coming out from Boston. You know, this is, this is going to be a great party. But remember, if you're not in black, we got to go back. I'm sorry. Um, all right, let's go to the phone. I got two pair of passes to give away. Hello? Hello? Hi, who's Andy? this? Yes? Hi, this is Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? Nothing but women winning today. Okay, you know what, men? Here's the deal. I've got three pair of passes to give away during the 6 o'clock hour, and doggone it, men, you need to call. Yeah. <laughs> Stephanie, what do you yes. do for a living? I'm an electrical engineer. Oh, heavy. As my parents yes. would say, heavy. Yes. Are you single? <laughs> yes, I am. Are, uh, are you over 21? I'm 23, yes. Perfect. You're in. Oh, you're you're in, staff. You. Where do you so, live? I live in the Bronx. Who are you bringing with you? I'm not sure yet. I got to see what my friends will do for one of them tickets. Oh! <laughs> 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 well, you got the golden ticket, Willy Wonka. Congratulations, Stephanie. I'll see you thank December you so 22nd. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, hold on. All right. And, and shout out to one of our proud sponsors, Demetrio Furs. They've got tickets right here in Midtown Manhattan at 212-695-8469. The great thing about the Demetrio brothers is that they don't just sponsor Dons and Divas. They don't just sell the tickets out of their showroom. They also attend Dons and Divas. Wait a minute. I have another pair of tickets to give away. Do you mind? Can can we just please uh, dip to another call? Sure. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey, Diva. It's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Good. Are you doing it for yourself? Yes, I am. Tell me about you. Um, I am a ward. I'm a wardrobe stylist, a fashion stylist. Okay. I work at Alvin Ailey in the wardrobe department. So, okay. Uh huh. And I also do fashion styling. Um, Different celebrities and magazines and stuff. Terrific. Are you, how old are you? 33. Perfect. I'll see you at the party. What's okay. your name? I'm Mary. Okay, Mary. Mary, get ready because we're dancing everything from Jody Watley and, um, and, um, Change to MOP and Jeezy. Great. I'm ready. Can you deal with that? Yes, I can. Okay, this is a brown and sexy party. Get your black. Okay. I'll see you December 22nd, Mary. Let us know your station. WPLA. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Hold on, Mary. <laughs> Hold on. All right. Bonus hours coming up at the top of the hour. Keep it where you got it. Introducing the new DirecTV Plus DVR. Hey, everybody. What were we talking about before? <laughs> <laughs> um, we were talking about, oh, Garcelle Bouvet. Goose and I hate these bangs. <laughs> um, we were talking about Garcelle Bouvier, <laughs> who's... <laughs> I do. <laughs> Lindsay, I do. Yes, Rick yes, James. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so anyway you know another hollywood tragedy i'm just i i feel affected i feel affected i hate to see you know all of these people getting a divorce but you know what people getting a divorce is the same opinion that i <laughs> shayla just walked in the room <laughs> Look, um, but when people get uh, divorced these days, it has the same effect as, like, I just heard, um, oh, gosh, somebody that I know's older sister, the sister's, like, 45 years old, and the sister was just diagnosed with breast cancer. It's very aggressive. Now, as far as I'm concerned, if you're within a 10-year range of me, you know, like, like, you know, five years younger, five years older... Then, as far as I'm concerned, as you die, the Grim Reaper is coming closer and closer to me. And I, you know, I just, you know, and, and for people getting divorced, 
being a married woman. If you divorce, then uh, it's just moving down the pike to me. It's like, it's like what the hell? <laughs> I mean, what the hell? Like, just now it's Garcelle Bouvier. And not only is it just Garcelle Bouvier and Heather Locklear, do you realize that both of these people are friends in my head? <laughs> Do you know how many cheesecakes I've had to deliver this month? Remember when the Golden Girls would get in a snit and they'd sit around and eat cheesecake and do their problems? Me and Heather, me and Garcelle, I can't take it. Vanessa Williams, I still don't know what's up with Vanessa Williams. Whatever happened with that, are they officially divorced? Let's go to the telephone. Let's talk. Hello, hi, it's Wendy, how are you? Hi. Hey, what's going on? Hi, Wendy. How are you? Yeah, you don't sound like you're on a particular mission. I'm just opening the phone about any old thing. There's nothing to win right now. It's not necessarily advice hour. You can talk about whatever you want. Oh, boy. Uh, now I don't know what to talk about. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Love you, Wendy. Love you, too. Have a nice day. You, too. Bye-bye. 866-GET-WENDY. It's just open lines because we're getting ready to say goodbye. Hello? 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 Hi. Oh, so you have more any tickets for any men out there? Oh, gosh. Yeah, um, wait until the bonus hour. For the bonus hour? I've been trying so hard to be honest. Oh, man. I'm the true born and sexy, though, for real. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. All right. Um, I need the, I need the telephone number in, um, in, um, the 302 in, in Delaware, by the way. I have no idea where it is. I've mis misplaced all of my... Thank you. Leave all my hair. <laughs> Hello? Hello, hi. Hi. Yeah, it's Wendy. You're on the radio. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I was actually on hold for tickets. But being that I'm on the phone to you and I doubt you're giving away tickets, I'm just calling to say hi. Oh, well, I, I appreciate how the holiday season's treating you. Or how is? I ate so much Thanksgiving with you. I gained six pounds. But you want to know what? Look, when you gain that much weight that quickly, it's usually pretty easy to lose as quickly. If you, if you clip it, because I gained... It turns out four pounds over Thanksgiving weekend lost five wow. as of this morning when I got on the scale. And then I'm starting the master cleanse on Monday. <laughs> I think I'm going to start it too if I win tickets to your party. Yeah. But I'm also going to join L.A. Weight Loss. Oh, that, that works. That works. <laughs> I'm an L.A. Weight Loss success story. I mean, the gym doesn't work for me because I, I, I go home and eat everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for calling. Thank you, Wendy. And have a wonderful day. You too. Let's Bye. go to line number seven. Look at this. Gail is 40 years old. She's having a relationship. Um, and her fiancé had a baby with another woman. Gail, do I have that correctly? Gail? Yes. Yeah. So, yes. So what um, you, what you, how long have you been engaged? We was engaged for about two years, one or three years. Oh. Oh, we were together for about six years. Mm. Yeah, so... um. Uh, we're, we're finished. The relationship is off. Good. I was a dealer with that. Yeah. He's a lot cheating bastard. Yeah. And the girl he had the baby with works with him. They oh. both work at Rikers Correction Officers, so they was cheating around together. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I just want to blast them out. That's all. Well, well, you sound like you're two seconds away from saying his name. <laughs> I am. <laughs> well, bite your tongue. Okay. All right. Take care. But, man. Wendy, uh -huh. um, another thing I want to talk to you about. I want some tickets from, I won some tickets to see Color Purple, mm -hmm. but being that I have won already within the uh, last past few months, I was not able to collect them. Uh -huh. So, being that I won back in September, when would I be able to win again? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. You'll have to get in touch with the promotions department. Mm -hmm. They they make up all those rules and stuff back there, okay? Promotion department. Okay. Yeah. Take care, Gail. All right. Thank and, you. And keep me. your chin up I for the holidays. I love you, show, and you are my girl. Thank you. I you love you, too, Gail. Th thank you, Gail. And so. what, we have to go? Yes. Good night, Brian, in the Bronx. He's calling from a doctor's office or he has a question. Brian, uh, God willing, we'll all be back again to, on Monday and then we can talk, okay? Everybody, <clears throat> I love you for listening. And have a wonderful weekend as you prepare for Christmas. Ugh. I'm dreading it. <laughs> but have a wonderful weekend and, um, and take care of each other. Bye-bye. Party, people. <laughs> See you later. Good night. Program complete. I'll take Brian on. I'll take Brian on line one. I just have to act like we were all going home together. Oh, oh see, he's he hung up. He fell for it. Damn. I'm sorry, Brian.
All right, you all. The bonus hour is coming up with the Wendy Williams experience. We'll talk about a bunch of different stuff. We'll gossip. Um, you can always call regarding um, advice if, you, if you're looking for, you know, little assistance pushing you one way or the other with something going on in your life. I'm one with an opinion. Plus, I've got three pair of Don's and Divas extravaganza passes. And, you know, the funny thing is, is that men are buying up the tickets in the streets as fast as women are but when it comes to on the radio there's an imbalance women are the ones calling on the radio but it is going to be a party to remember like the previous five have been and i've got um three pair of johns and Beavis classes to give away during the bonus hour so grown and sexy there for you because we're going to be doing it for ourselves on december 22nd made a mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. Oh, my Lord. I'm not ready for this day. That was the most erratic, weird interview I'd ever heard. I'd ever heard. The Wendy Williams Experience. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? <laughs> How long this bonus hour gonna last? I'm getting addicted. No, we tell you. I'm not off this extra hour. Everything is organic here on this bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check yourself. Wendy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams experience. 107.5 WBLS, New York. Sorry about the Christmas music. If you're like me, then it's like, you know, I don't know why I have a beautiful voice you have, but oh, no, for Christ's sake. Pipe down. I usually try to make a seamless entrance, you know, right from the commercials into the, you know, radio station ID into the talk. But I was in the pink room, you know, trying on my Don's and Divas dress and getting pinned and stuff. Good old Steve. Steve, I don't know how to make a pink dress. Okay. Wendy, maybe I didn't hear you say, but where are you buying your organic grade B maple syrup? I'm going to start that diet on Monday also, and I need to find out all the ingredients. Oh, Kanye pepper in the supermarket? Yeah, you buy the Cayenne, Cayenne pepper in the supermarket. Um, and the, where am I going to buy the gray bean? I'm going to go to an organic um, food store, which I don't think I've ever been to in my entire life. But why would you ask me something like that? Like, how can I figure out that? But people say, where, where, where are you going to buy? Unless you can get it at the Whole Foods. Which is like an organic grocery store in a lot of ways. I don't know. I'm going to check around. I'm going to buy the stuff. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to go to Home Goods tomorrow to get my um, get some new Christmas decorations. Home Goods is now a big, proud sponsor here on the Wendy Williams Experience, which I love. I don't have to feel guilty about talking about it. They've got the best Christmas selection. Then the Harrows, I was telling earlier, they got 70% off Christmas trees beginning Tuesday. <clears throat> I'm not putting up a big, 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 huge, you know, call somebody to put up a Christmas tree. So I can't even bother to fall up. But I got to do a little something. So I'm going to put up one of those pup Christmas trees. Six feet tall. It is pup. It's pre-lit. You plug it in. Throw a few home goods um, things on it and call it a day. It's not that I'm feeling scroogey or anything like that. I'm, the only reason why I'm doing this really is for, you know, our son. My husband and I, we don't care. We're all wrapped up in this Don's and Divas extravaganza. I mean, you know. <laughs> And I'm going to save the receipt from Harrow's over this weekend. And then on Tuesday, I'm going to go back in there and, and get, I'm going to get the sales price. My mother taught me that trick. Shout out to Manny in Union, New Jersey. Thank you, Manny. Hmm. Manny says, Nikki Harris, who everybody happens to be a Madonna's background dancer, the black girl. Remember, she had one black, one white. And then everybody else is like insignificant compared to Nikki and and Fricky. I don't know the other girl's name, but, you know. They've been riding with Madonna's uh, thing for years, but Nikki, um, Manny says, is also a um, gospel singer, and she did background in Like a Prayer. She has her own website she needed to get from behind Madonna. Yeah, but her best years were spent up under Madonna. Like, like Nikki is like 47 like Madonna now. And I don't want to say that life is over at 47. I don't mean that by any means. 
But being a singer and a dancer and all like that, I mean, like her best performance years, the money-making years and all that other kind of stuff, she spent with Madonna. Everybody turned on bonus hours like, what the hell is Wendy talking about? Hold on, let me grab my garbage chair. <laughs> I, I sit a chair next to me here in the studio and I just pile my garbage in it and at the end of the show I throw it away. Okay, here's the Madonna story I was talking about. I'm, I have Don's and Divas passes, by the way. As soon as I catch my breath, but before the 6.30 break, I'm giving away three passes, three pair of passes to the Don's and Divas extravaganza. Oh, here it is. Mm. Nikki Harris, everybody, has been fired as Madonna's background singer-dancer woman. Can you believe that? Like these two, because Madonna's had such a long, steady relationship with them. It's kind of like Gail and Oprah breaking up or something. You know what I mean? It's just like. I mean, it's Paulette and Denzel. Garcelle Bouvier is getting a divorce. Who else? Morris Chestnut's getting a divorce. <laughs> she didn't deserve him. Now you have a shot. He's a friend to the show. Maybe he'll be at Don's and Divas. All that open bar. Anything can happen. <laughs> and, the, and the place holds 2,500 people. You can just get mixed up in the mix and take them to a, a broom closet. Are you going to be there, Stacey? Yeah. Okay, good. I got a nice little Good, 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 good. Stacey Anderson, everybody, on, on music. <laughs> <laughs> we were preparing for the reinvention tour in the summer of 2004. And in one section of the show, Madonna planned to have burning crosses and the dancers, including myself, would be dressed as Klansmen. <laughs> on the stage. I told her nicely that as an African American, I didn't appreciate it and I wouldn't be part of that number. And she argued that it was art because we were tight at the time. I told her, boom. Madonna argued with me and we shut down rehearsal and I was so mad that I told her that she could put that square there. No, she says, um, I was so mad at Madonna that I told her she is always exploiting black folks, biting our style, our choreography, our videos. But when it came down to being black, Madonna, you would run back to the white side. And Madonna didn't like it, and she fired me, and she replaced me with Saida Garrett, who went ahead and did the Klansman number, put on the KKK robe, and it really disappointed me because Saida didn't care about how we were being portrayed. Call it a bad career move, but it wasn't like I was famous and rolling in the money because of Madonna. Well, no. We knew you because of Madonna. Now, if you weren't rolling in the money, that's between you and Madonna. But here's her final, her final um, thought. I had many hustles going on, and I still do. Well, that's that's uh, that's Nikki Harris, and I'm um, I'm not feeling Madonna. That's where I'm. Because at the end of the day, even Madonna says, "You ain't nothing. You better put on this clam's robe." Damn you, Madonna. Damn you. This is what a lot of us needed to hear about Madonna. Hey, Elisa, I know it's Friday. She works so hard. Elisa, Elisa, can we please get Nikki Harris on the, on the Wendy Williams experience? This is what a lot of us, including me, needed to hear about Madonna. Like, you don't really want to believe that at the end of the day, you're nothing but, a, that's the thought of everybody. You don't want to believe that. You don't want to believe that. That's not artistic and creative. That's, you know, you've stepped the line. Has she stepped the line? Has she stepped the line? 
Wait, first of all, you girls are too young to even be big Madonna fans, you girl Friday. So I don't even know why I'm talking to you. You don't, you're, you weren't really there. You weren't at Macy's when they had the, no, you weren't when they had the Madonna um, section at Macy's. I had lace in my hair and those rubber bands on my arms and those stupid bobby socks. I've been to like four or five Madonna concerts. I needed to hear that. Well, uh, Elisa would like the information, please. <laughs> <laughs> I just said the information. I know, maybe, uh, yeah. so she would like in the meantime, look where, look where Nikki's career is right now. She was touring with Rufus, Peaches and Herb, <laughs> Troop, <laughs> Shy, and other old schoolers. That's where her career is now. Madonna sucked up her best dance years. Probably left her with a tricked out me and, and camel toe. Those ladies, ladies, I always called that, um, I always called that a tuck hump. <laughs> but, but, but we were talking, you know, girl talking in the pink room the other day. I didn't know that this is what we girls call the camel toe when your jeans pull up like this. <laughs> that's, you know, that, that's the pull up. You know, mm -hmm. girls, I didn't know that, that, that every, all girls know that except for me. <laughs> I always called that the tuck hump, like, you know, like, like you're a man and you're really tucking so hard, that, you know, trying to show like you have a private part like a woman. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why did I even mention that? Why did I even mention that? Why did I? Why did I say that? Oh, I know. I think it was one of the girls in the office bought a juicy sweatsuit. I forgot which one. And it was so tight that it was giving her camel toe. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's a fine line between the feminine V and the camel toe. Because I, as a woman, I don't like masculine crotch. You, like, Queen Latifah always has masculine crotch. Do you know what that is? <laughs> Nothing is meeting up to your private area. You can drive a truck through the space, you know, because you know they're not you're not pulling everything up to your private. And then there's too much, too much of that folding at the fly area. Too much material, and then everything looks masculine, like you're, like you're, you're holding a package. I don't like that, but I like a well-defined feminine V. I think that, that looks nice. It's very comfortable. But if the feminine V is too tight, that's when you get the camel toe. <laughs> that's when you get the... And then the camel toe, yeah. You know who has camel toe all the time in jeans? Cher. <laughs> Cher. Cher. Always has camel toe in her jeans. Everything's always divided. One lip on one side, one lip on the other. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's just so funny. Let's uh, try to give away some Dons and Divas passes, please. Hello, darling. Who am I speaking with? Hi, this is Rory. Hi, Rory. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good. Rory, you sound like a set... What, I hear some kids back there? Mm -hmm. No, there's no kids over here. Okay. No. Oh, that's my I'm mother. at work. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not, not on the radio, am I? Yes, sure, Rory. Oh, hey, everybody. How are you doing? Rory, where are you from? I'm from Pennsylvania. Oh, from the Poconos. Oh, right. Nice to have you here. Now, of course, you know there's going to be a lot of free booze at the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. You know what? It, I heard it was off the hook. This would be my first time. I need a break, and I need a little bit of time to myself. Oh, you're going to get a hotel room in the city? Um, I'm at. Or a driver. Which one? Uh, well, I don't, well, I'm not sure yet. It, Rory, you can't possibly think about hitting the road after uh, Mary J and, and the, the, the partying all night. You, well, you know what? Maybe I'll book a hotel then. Yeah. Well, you probably need to do that. Book it for December 22nd because I'll see you at the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Ah! What are you doing for yourself there in the Poconos? I'm a salesperson. Oh, you spend a lot of time on the road? Yeah, and I go to school, too. No, I actually work in a furniture store. Oh. Yeah. What furniture? Maurice Valenci? Um, no, Raymore and Flanagan. Oh, I know them. I know them. 
And so you, you know them? And so you go to school? I go to school. Where do you go? Um, Northampton uh-huh. for education. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how, how are you living? Are you got, got a boyfriend? I have a husband. Mm-hmm. A, a couple of jump-offs? Uh, <laughs> now I'm doing a jump-off thing. Okay. <laughs> so, you're going to be the, uh, Yes, I am. I hear that. Yes, I am. Well, this is a grown and sexy party. Okay. And, um, it's, it, you know, it's just going to be wonderful and fabulous. And, Rory, it is my pleasure to tell you that you've got one of the three pair of passes that I'm giving away this hour. Thank you so much. I really need it. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to have a lot of fun. I'm giving away these passes now, everybody. So, um, you know, call now. i got another pair. Put Rory on hold. She's on line number five. All right. Let's go to another line and see who's there. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, turn your radio all the way down. Turn it down? Yeah, what's your name there, Killer? Oh, my name is Dez. Ooh, Dez. Dez, Dez what do you do for yourself? Uh, I'm a prosthetic and orthotic practitioner. In other words, you make artificial limbs? Yeah, we make artificial limbs. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Can you turn your radio down for a minute? Do you have... Hold up, I'm on the radio? Yes. Wow. 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 Wendy, what's up, girl? Wow. Oh, see, wow. Coolio. <laughs> <laughs> I was a show. <laughs> yeah, Daz. Hey, listen, so where are you from? From Queens. Very nice. I have a telephone number, by the way. If you're not going to win like Daz, then you could go out and, you know, purchase your um, tickets or else keep listening. we get so many tickets. <laughs> Say it again, Wendy, one more time. No, I was talking to everybody else, Daz. Uh, Daz, so do you work in Queens? Do you work in Manhattan? No, I work in Brooklyn, actually. Okay, nice. Um, and do you have children? Yeah, I have a son. Are you married? Um, no. You're, are you still romantically involved with your baby's mother? Um, nah. No, here and there, that means. No, nah, it's, it's been over for a couple of years. Oh, okay. So you're, you're open to a new relationship. Yeah. In other <laughs> words, you're open to a good time at the Dons and Divas. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a pair of passes, Daz. Who are you bringing with you? Oh, I'm not sure yet, Wendy. I'm not sure yet. Mm, yeah. I'm still, I'm still happy right now. I'm still trying to bask in my glory. Yeah, well, I hear that. And listen, do you remember the color that, that the party is... Um, the, the theme color? Mm, black. Yes, there you go. Okay, very oh, good. Thank you, <laughs> Black. That wasn't like a trick question or anything, right? Well, yeah, actually it was, because I just wanted to make sure that you were um, listening hard. Yeah, so, I'm listening hard, Wendy. So, so thank you, Daz. So you're 30 years old? Yeah, I'm, uh, unfortunately. What, does, do you feel old? Um, no, nah, I don't feel old, but that number is kind of scary. Yeah. It's a new number. Yeah. I'm in my 20s. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you well educated? Did you go to school? Yeah, I finished college. And actually, um, in January, I'm going to California for grad school. Very nice. So we'll give you a nice send-off party. Yeah. December 22nd. It's great. Yeah. All right, Des. Hold on just a moment. Love we'll, you, girl. I love you, too, Des. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. And in the meantime, now we'll hold off for a moment on, um, on the Dons and Divas passes. Actually... Yeah. <clears throat> no, never mind. <clears throat> I wanted to give the Queen's number. Because Des is from Queens. Um, Hillside Auto Spa. My man Ron Don owns the joint. And he's holding tickets for the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. 718. That damn Madonna. <laughs> All those years I gave her my love. At the end of the day. I am surprised. I thought, you know, we were led to believe that she's so enlightened. We are the world. We are the children. <laughs> you know, when she was fertile, she called uh, 523-2309. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait until I... It gets rid of all the phlegm. 718-523-2309. We thought she was so enlightened. I love the gay people. I love the black people. I love, the, you know, black men and white men. And, you know, Papa, don't preach. I'm in love with him. I thought everybody was on a holiday with Madonna. You know, like Madonna just spelled, you know, oneness as humankind. Nope, not anymore. I'm glad I'm I'm glad I'm I'm glad I'm older and I don't care. Like I'm not a part of, you know, like I don't have to burn I'm burning my records. <laughs> what am I gonna do with all of this lace and these rubber bands? Mommy That's it. 
Jodie Watley will always be my girl. F you, Madonna. <laughs> you know, like I, I, after I give away the Dons and Davis passes, I would love to talk to people from the Madonna era. My girl Fridays are so young. They're confused. Hey, Beyonce girls. Who's you all's, who's you all's icon? Not Jodie Watley. You probably couldn't even appreciate her coming in today, could you? Jodie Watley yeah. was here earlier. You could? Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> Let me find out you're over 25. How old are you, Taryn? 23. 23. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right, but your boyfriend's like 80. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Never mind. She's an older soul. That's right. It's Taryn. Well, I have to tell you something. This is Jody Wantley and I, <clears throat> we're going to be. Oh, boy. Turn off every mic in the room. Go. Cool. <laughs> hey. <laughs> emergency emergency <laughs> oh do i look crazy over here with my beef off <laughs> <laughs> um so look <clears throat> me and jody and God only knows who else people. You know, the gay men's health crisis. They do this um, AIDS dance danceathon um, to enlighten, to help encourage support, to raise money for HIV AIDS every year. It seems like this has been around since forever. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> Madonna has appeared there. You know when she was you know on the comeuppance, um, doing holiday celebration and stuff like that, and it kind of became unofficially established that you know. That's just a fabulous place for, you know, artists to appear. In addition, it's a great cause, and the kids have fun. 24 hours, they're dancing, dancing, dancing at the Jacob Javits Center, raising money for HIV-AIDS awareness. And shout-out to the Gay Men's Health Crisis. I'm so honored. They asked me to be there this year. I feel like I was really somebody. I got that telephone. I'm like, what? Me? Oh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so I'll be there tomorrow between 7 and 9. Watley didn't tell me what time she's going to be there. She's performing and everything, though. Jody Watley, mm. let you find out. Why did I ask Jody Watley about Jermaine Stewart? Because she mentioned that Jermaine Stewart was one of her um, great friends and before he passed. And they went through a tiff. And remember that song, Friends, that Jody did, that Rak- Rakim did with her? <laughs> Friends, they let you down. That was at the time when Jody and Jermaine were going through it. In the meantime, all I needed was for somebody that comes on this mic to say that they knew and were best friends with Jermaine Stewart so that I can then bring up the question from an insider. What was that relationship all about with James, uh, Jermaine Stewart and Magic Johnson? Hmm. Hmm. Let Jody talk. What'd she say? <laughs> You'll have to read my book. It was, well, body language got all and mouth tuned up and... The sh- 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 look happened, and I said, mm, let me find out. That's where it came from. Whoa. I'm telling you something right now. Mother's lived. And I'm talking about Jody now. She has lived. And she and Jermaine Stewart were best friends. Jermaine Stewart passed of AIDS years ago. The word is out. Remember him with his pressed hair? Remember, remember Jermaine Stewart with his pressed hair? If he was still alive, I bet you'd have a full-blown weave by now. And pressed. Flat iron, we call it now. I'm sorry. We don't use pressed. Politically incorrect. Uh, can you have a flat iron? <laughs> it's just like nobody calls anything maroon anymore. It's called burgundy. I remember when Burgundy was called maroon. No. Do you remember that? Yeah. I thought it was still called that. No, people called it Burgundy. <laughs> oh, you that's a beautiful Burgundy bag. <clears throat> if you call it maroon, you're showing your age, I guess. I don't know. Oh, I got another pair of these Dons and Divas passes. Let's give this last pair away. Hey now, you're an all-star. What's your name? 
Kareem. Hey, well, hey, boy. How you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How old are you, Kareem? Twenty-seven. Ooh, ripe. What do you do? <laughs> what, do, you what, do you, what do you do for a living? I'm self-employed. I'm an executive recruiter. Oh. <laughs> An executive recruiter. So you travel the country? No, no, no. I work from home and I um I build clientele through um, just basically cold calls, stuff like that. Get my hustle, my grind on. Nice. Where are you from? I'm sorry. Where are you from? I'm from Harlem. Okay, very nice. Harlem in the building, everybody. December twenty second, Kareem, the Don's and Divas Extravaganza. I want you to be there, okay? Thank you, Wendy. Now are you a single dude? Yes, I am. Who are you bring in? My best friend. Good. Damn. Good. How Great. you doing? Uh, oh. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Kareem. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Kareem. Hold on a moment. All right, now. We're gonna take Love on. you, Wendy. Love you, too, Kareem. Take care. Bye-bye. I mean, hold on. <clears throat> Harlem. You can get your tickets at Black Star Music, 212-234-6244. Shout out to Stephen Madden. He's one of the big sponsors for Dons and Divas, Steve Madden also. I was driving on 8th Avenue today. I saw the best pair of stilettos. They looked like they were like six inches and they had rhinestones on them. And I just wanted to stop and stare at them. I said, I've never seen those in the store before. Mm. Gilead Clothing. They are a um, relatively new urban apparel line from the makers of Academic. They branched out and they're doing their own Gilead Clothing. Uh, shout out to Jamique and Dante, the founders. They're sponsoring the whole VIP, decorating it. The whole bit. And by the way, we're doing gift bags just like at the Oscars. Just like at the just like at the MTV Video Music Awards. We got gift bags for the VIP. All kind of stuff. The sponsors are coming through. Dollhouse. Trying to cram some shoes in the gift bags. I mean, these are gift damn bags. <laughs> Do you know that lip plump that Vivica Fox lied and said she uses? But I know damn well she got some wrestling up in them lips. <laughs> The Lip Plump Company sent us boxes and boxes of it. We're putting it in the gift bags. Jolie Magazine is giving magazines. Men, I got some bumple still skin bump remover for you all from a company. You know, you get the get the bumps on your, you know. Bumps. Yep. I, I got you covered. We're having gift bags. Just like the Grammys. And a red carpet. Shut up. Whoa. Yeah. Except it's pink. It's in the office. It's in the office rolled up in the corner. You see it, right? <clears throat> the pink carpet. Yeah, but don't laugh, though. We had to actually per uh, purchase that from a costume shop. Like, you know, one of those places where you rent theatric furniture and things like that? Mm. We rented the pink carpet for my pink carpet album release party during the summer. And you know how when you rent something long enough, like a blockbuster, if you don't return it, the bill is so high, you might as well just own it. So, so now we own the pink carpet. By default. By default. It costs us like $1,500. I swear, it's, it's like the material is like indoor-outdoor carpet. It's like, it's like $1,500. We could have gone someplace and gotten a fabulous full room done for this. So I'm going to use it, damn it. Damn right. We're having a pink carpet arrival at the Dons and Divas extra extravaganza. And right after the party, we're going to roll that carpet up and bring it right back into the pink room. Wait for the next uh, e e event. Hell, we need to get our money's worth out of that pink carpet. We might have to start having pink carpet arrivals as the, at the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience at the Laugh Factory. BLS needs to put the pink carpet at the front door here. Have pink carpet arrival for, you know, the employees. That carpet was... Does anybody want to buy a pink carpet? <laughs> Look, if my car careens off the West Side Highway, can somebody sell it on eBay? No, come on, you guys. You can laugh at that. I know that's a little death joke. Everybody gets all nervous when I make a death joke. Calm down. Nobody knows how to react. What's the matter? <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs>
Uh, you guys scared of death jokes? Oh. I <laughs> The group paper right now. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's a fact of life, though. It's all in the way you go. Yeah, you live to die. Yeah, you live to die, Goose. <laughs> Have you ever been almost near death, Goose? Yeah. One time I was. Sometimes you get high enough you feel that way. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I don't count that because you never think you're near death. You just, you know, say, I'll never do it again. I'll never do it again. And then, and then, and then like little, like little Kim in the Welcome to Brooklyn song is, drug dealer, give me one more, or bartender, give me one more, or whatever. You know, you go back. But I mean, like really near death. Like I fell asleep on the Jersey Turnpike going, this is when I was living uh, in Jersey City. And my parents hadn't yet sold our house in Ocean Township. They hadn't become snowboard. You know, they were like back and forth to Florida, but they hadn't taken up residence there. So it was Christmas time and I was going home and I pulled an all night shift when when it was shot 103.9. And I pulled an all night shift and I was so tired because I it pulled a shift in D.C. too. I wasn't yet officially here in New York. I was like back and forth hustling both. And I was just doing a lot of back and forth driving and everything. And I made it out of the Lincoln Tunnel and I'm on my way down to um, the Jersey Shore and I fell asleep at the wheel of my at the time I was driving a Subaru and I remember when I woke up the radio, I was telling you, well, I think this the other day, Ooh, it's Jaws commentated. <laughs> that was my wake up song. That song always means something to me because I. Oh, see the rock? Yes, it was all. I had a mix it because back then, I, you know, it was, you know, it was a different. Anyway. I just showed my age, right? <laughs> exactly. Yo, I woke up and literally my car was like. Two feet from a, maybe a 50-foot embankment. I would have really died. I would have crashed through the barrier because I was going at a speed. I would have rolled down, and I would have been killed. Wow. Exactly. And when I woke up, T. Rock, it's Jaws, commentated, illustrated, descriptive. Game. I couldn't even move. I positioned my car on the shoulder. Pulled out my pack of Newports. So I, I smoked like three <laughs> cigarettes back to back to back to back. Shock. Shock. And then I went home. That was the closest to death. Because that was sure death. You know, a little palpitation never hurt no one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you're, in, when you're in the midst of a federation, you never learn until you really learn. <laughs> you know what I mean? I remember one time I passed out. I was having a little party. You know what I'm saying? When I was working in uh, D.C. And I, and I passed out. I told the story in my book. And when I came to... All the heads were tipping to the front door. They were going to leave me there to die. <laughs> you know what they say, though? There's no honor in the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. From the users to the dealers to the... They, there's like, there's no honor. And that's, and, that, and that's real. Because the people that I was with, it wasn't a bunch of people. It was like, by the way, look what a mess I am for the holiday season. Can you look at my elbows? Look at my psoriasis. I went in the bathroom. I saw my elbows. I wanted to cry and die. Look at that. And I'm going sleeveless for Dons and Divas. <laughs> my elbows are starting to look like my lower legs. The psoriasis and stress of the holidays is just... i got to figure out another way to let the stress out because this is ridiculous. Watch this start creeping up to my face and on my eyes and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go home, I'm going to slather myself with, uh, with psoriasis lotion, then I wrap myself up with saran wrap, and I live that way all weekend. <laughs> by, by Monday morning, my skin is always like veal. <laughs> it is. That's soft and like butter, like, you know, falling off the bone. I get my best, you know, moisturizing on the weekends, because I do. I like to, I wrap myself in the saran wrap, and... You know, just for my... And I sit in the house in my robe. And if you ever see me on the weekends out anywhere, just know that underneath my, my sweats and my clothes, it's all saran wrap and, and, and greasy <laughs> eczema lotion and stuff. Yeah? Yeah. T-L-A-R-O-C-K. It's yours. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. So we gave away all the Dons and Divas passes. Right, so we can take a break. All right, Goose. The job is done. No, we got another 10 minutes. 
but I am going to drive slow with two hands at 10 and 2 tonight. You know, because after you say something like that, you know what? It's easy to mix it up with you all here in the room, but when I get in my car and it's just me, myself, and I, I don't know. and I don't turn on the music or the radio right away, you know, I like to be alone with my thoughts and I see the West Side Highway right there. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Let me drive over here on the slow lane. Let me slow it down. Let me, you know. Yeah. And I never listen to that Tila Rock song when I'm in the car by myself. Because, you know, it brings back the... Flashbacks. Yeah. Flashback. Mm -hmm. Who's that? <laughs> yeah. All right. Look, can I just do the people poll question? I'll do it when we come back. Mm -hmm. All right. Keep it where you got it, everybody. It's Wendy Williams nonstop till 7 o'clock on 107.5 WBLS. Hey, this is Vaughn Harper. Spend your weeknights with me from 7 to midnight on The Quiet Storm. Yeah. Wasn't that easy? Yo, what's up? This is Morris Chestnut, and you're listening to The Bonus Hour on 107.5 WBLS. Tap and go. Sounds like a booty call. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Wendy Williams experience, everybody. Oh, my gosh. We only have, like, seven minutes. Crap. The ultimate Christmas party with a purpose is happening on December 17th. It's going to be fabulous. It's going to be at the Marriott Marquis, 45th Street and Broadway. Great food. I just learned today Sharis is performing. I did not know that. Sharissa and Cameo and Jaheem, Danielle Jones and Vivian Green. Plus the food, the fashion, the live entertainment, the booze. It's sponsored by the New York City Department of Health. This is our WBLS Christmas party with a purpose. We do it every year. And the purpose this year is to benefit the anti-domestic violence programs, Safe Horizon and Day One. So I'll see you on December 17th. Get your tickets now at Ticketmaster. Got something for you to win right now. Goosey Goose, we'll just pick up the telephone. Who wants to go to the movies to see the biggest premiere of the season? It's the world premiere of Universal Pictures' King Kong. Yeah. It's going to be in theaters December 14th, and this will qualify you for a limo ride to the show, courtesy of your radio station. That's fabulous. Hi. Hey, Wendy. How's it going? Yeah, it's BLS. Hey, listen, would you like to go see the Universal Pictures uh, premiere of King Kong? Sure. Okay. What's your name? Jason. Hey, Jason. Where are you calling from? From Atlanta. Oh. Okay. Oh, never mind, Jason. Are you going to be in New York on December 14th? Yeah, I'll be in New York. I got to come up there visit my family, and I'm coming to Dimes and Divas. Wait a minute, Jason. Back to when are you planning on arriving? Um, actually, in let's see, look at my calendar. This is all too much, Jason. <laughs> Let me just give the pass to someone else, okay? All right, that's fine. All right, great. Bye. Trying to sound fabulous and jet set. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, from New York to Atlanta. Hello. Hello, Wendy. Hi. You're gonna go see King Kong. How about that? Okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I'm, I'm going to see what? Never mind. <laughs> I'll get somebody else, okay? Okay. Okay, bye. Bye. Well, what the hell? Scarlett Johansson's in this. Doesn't anybody give a damn? <laughs> this is going to be a good movie. Hello? Hello. Ha. <laughs> hey. Hey. How you doing? I I'm fine. All right. So, you, would you like to go see King Kong? Definitely. Okay, good. It's the world premiere of Universal Pictures' King Kong. People are making a big deal over this. It's in theaters December 14th, and you qualify for a limo ride to and from the show, courtesy of WBLS. Isn't that great? Hello? Yes, definitely. What are you doing? <laughs> Tying up some loose ends at work. <laughs> With the executive secretary? Mm. Something like that. Oh, What? Are you the boss? No, I'm not. What do you do there at work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wendy. Go ahead, Wendy. No, okay. What's your name? Barry. Hi, Barry. Where are you calling from? Brooklyn. Okay, let me put you on hold, and we're going to take all your information, okay? Thank you. Enjoy man. yourself at King Kong. Put Barry on hold. I wanted you guys to know that Paula Abdul is finally... Has she ever created a workout video or anything like that? Anything to capitalize off that dance style thing that she does? <clears throat> Well, she finally has, and I'm thinking that she's done it too late, late because Billy Blanks and our friend, what's our dance grooves? Darren Dance Grooves. There's too many other people out here now, and Paula, nobody cares. You should have done this years ago, but okay. She says, cheerleading is a combination of three things, fitness, dance, and music. I felt that creating cardio cheer 
would be a great way to teach dance, build confidence, and help today's kids stay healthy. Nobody cares. Michelle Rodriguez, how you doing? How you doing? Ow. And the other woman that she's on lost with, Cynthia Watros, were arrested <clears throat> within 15 minutes of each other. <laughs> Apparently, they were in Hawaii. I think they were in Hawaii. Where's a place named Kalua? Sounds yeah. like Hawaii, right? Huh? Yeah. And Hawaii. they were and they were driving drunk? Both of them separately in each incident failed the field sobriety test. They were in separate cars. They were arrested after their vehicles were spotted weaving. Okay, so they just left the club. They were probably going back to the How You Doing Palace. Weaving and bobbing. Bobbing and weaving. So... The girl Cynthia was arrested at 2.05 a.m. And here comes Michelle, seeing her as opposed to speeding past and minding her own damn business. She wanted to pull a Gerald Levert and stop. Remember Gerald Levert stopped and argued with the cops? Because the co they were in a caravan, too. One of the friends got stopped, and Gerald stopped as, what's going on? And Gerald ended up getting in trouble, too, but he, he ended up getting off. Here goes Michelle stopping the car. And at 12.20, after they assessed that, oh, you're drunk too, she was arrested too. <laughs> she was booked under the name Mai Tai Michelle Rodriguez. And they're, and they're both out. Uh, she's 27 and Cynthia's 37. Oh, guess who else was almost arrested? But you know what? This is the difference, I guess, between being Vince Vaughn, boyfriend to Jennifer Aniston. See... I don't know who Cynthia... I don't watch the show Lost. I'm sorry. I know I'm like the only one on the planet who doesn't. I know the lady who vacuums the studio must really hate me because I pull my hair. Girls, you know how we pull out our hair and anything loose we drop on the floor except in our own houses? I drop the hair on the floor and I know it gets tangled in the vacuum cleaner. I can't help it. I should probably put it in my garbage chair. I'm going to start doing that. That's how your name is Wendy. She got a son named Kevin too? Yeah, you did. The cleaning lady. Bye. Yeah, she's a nice lady. <clears throat> so look, Vince Vaughn and Jennifer Aniston were pulled over in Scottsdale, Arizona. They gave Vince, who was driving the field sobriety test, he wasn't cited for any violation. I wonder why. Because his last name isn't Rodriguez or Johnson. Or maybe he doesn't he didn't have a, a Rainbow Coalition sticker on the back of his car. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Miss Wendy. It's nice to have you here. What is that? Oh, this is a magazine for Mr. Trevor. Oh. oh. Is that Takara on the front? Yes. She used up all the pink ink. Wow. <laughs> Takara is on the cover wow. of Black Men Magazine. Wow. 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 <laughs> oh, you're going to have fun tonight, Trevor. Yo, Takara breast. What is that? A 55 triple F? 36 triple D. triple D. No, that's not and she, no, I know what she told me. And she really <laughs> lost weight. What is she covering the lipo shots? What see, it's always suspect when they pose with the hand over the That's yeah. all right though, I'll deal with it. I hate when the women yeah, you know what? I hate when they pose with the thing over the stomach. Why don't they just use derma blend on the surgery marks? And I'm not saying my friend Takara had surgery, but I'm just saying that every time she poses does she let me say. No, this is not her. Where's the other picture? So Vince Vaughn, right? So they give him a field sobriety test. And he, they, the cops say he was uh, just below the alcohol impairment level, but they suggested that he park his car or his van that he just. Do they suggest that if, if they, they smell alcohol, but you're not bobbing and weaving and you're below the level? Why do you still have to get out of the car? They were in a caravan, too. They got in the car of the caravan and left the van that they were actually driving there. Um, I don't know. To be stripped? I, I don't know. Did you hear about the... Oh, wow, she looks really good there. I got to get my girl to car at the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. Uh, can, can you email her? Sure. All right, email her. Tell her it's about time she come in. And she tell us all what she's doing. She's been on the show like twice. I love Takara from America's Next. I love her. She I love her. Look at that waist. To death. I don't care what she got. I don't care what she got. She reps. <clears throat> of course she got something. Nobody poses like that. <laughs>
<laughs> who poses with who poses all laid back with the hair thrown back and then a hand on the waist? What is that? At the tummy tuck spot? And it's covered in every spot in every picture. And, yep, that area is covered in every picture. Even a man who would love to sleep with her admits it. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. It's okay. That's all right, I'll work with you. That's what I'm saying, exactly. The guy who was impersonating Eminem, who beat his wife to death and stuffed her body in a suitcase. <laughs> In a scene reminiscent of Stan, the video, is now facing life in prison. His name is Christopher Duncan. And he's imitating Eminem. He's 21 years old. He has the same hair color, the same hairstyle, the same tattoos. And he pled guilty on Thursday for killing his 26-year-old aspiring singer wife. Beating her to death and stuffing her body in a suitcase. They met at a karaoke bar last year. It takes all kinds. They became smitten with each other. The killer then took the, the, the dead woman back to his apartment, beat her over the head with the iron bat. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh wow. 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 <laughs> what makes people what makes people laugh at something like that? What do you have your mind, Shakira? You try to kill a cadaver. <laughs> Let me finish my story. You better not press my goodbye uh car. Hold on. No, 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 no. <laughs> Listen to this. So they met last year at the karaoke bar. They became, you know, hot for each other. He took her back to his apartment. He beat her over the head with an iron baseball bat oh <laughs> until she fell unconscious. Then he oh stuffed God. her in a suitcase. <laughs> Medical examiners testify that she stayed alive for at least four hours in the suitcase. Oh, my God. Oh my God. People are wondering now. Oh, my God. The, the dude was high on ecstasy and LSD at the time. And he's obsessed with the Stan video. Mm -mm. And Eminem. Then he threw the suitcase in the trunk of his car and drove it to the bridge. Oh, my gosh. I got to go. You people are sick and you're getting sicker and you're all going to hell. All your cars are going to careen off the West Side <laughs> Highway. <laughs> I'm scared to get in the car. I'm scared oh to be alone. As soon as I get in the car, I'm getting on the cell phone. And I'm turning on the music, and I can't think about the West Side. I'm not driving on the West Side Highway. When I'm saying Tila Rock on the radio. I'm saying, oh. if I hear it, Funk Master Flat, Vaughn, if you play Tila Rock, I'm going to come back up here and crack your skull. I'm going to take the FDR to the GW. <laughs> I'm not going over that one slide. I want to clean up the GW brand. <laughs> T-L-A of the O-C-K. <laughs> <laughs> Love you all for listening. It's a wonderful weekend or week of radio. Don't forget the best of the Wendy Williams experience tomorrow morning. The best of whatever Hollywood puts together. A BLS is running the best of Steve Harvey from 6A to 8A on Saturdays. And then the best of the Wendy from 8A to 10, 10A. So you got the best of the best of the whole New York City radio uh, every Saturday morning beginning last weekend. If you missed it, you can get on it this weekend. Take care of one another. Happy holidays. Bye. The Wendy Williams Broadcast Day has completed. Oh man! And WBLS music starts next. Yes, Kings and Queens, this is the original Rude Boy Dow Kinyo reminding you to join me inside the ballroom each and every Saturday, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m.